Hello, Internet. I think we are live. Are we good? Yeah. We're going. Uh, we are Massive Damage Adventures, a one-shot actual play podcast. But today we are playing the first session in a short superhero campaign. I am Merrick Moyer. With me, I have Amanda Hicks, Corey Hicks, Jen Moyer, Patrick McGeehan, and Katie Witten. Uh, they are playing Ruby, Hattie, Alex, Zach, and Roach. So this is Heroes of the Reef, a cypher system superhero story, but a bunch of powered teens at them all in the fictional city of Breaker Bay. Yay! Yay! Ooh. Hi! Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, first up, extra special thanks to our two sponsors. Uh, we have, uh, we are sponsored by Roll20, the Whee! virtual tabletop. Uh, Roll20 is wonderful. We use it to track our campaigns, uh, uh, put up maps and tokens and notes and all sorts of things. And ever since we've had to move everything online, we've been using Roll20 for basically everything. Uh, thank you, Roll20, for sponsoring us. We love you. Yeah! Um, our, our other sponsor is Monty Cook Games. They are the creators of the Cypher system. Um, they just wrapped a Kickstarter today, so unfortunately, if you're watching this live, you missed out on The Darkest House, but you should definitely check back if you like horror stuff on Monty Cook Games. And they got a bunch of stuff going on. They kickstarted um, some more Cypher System stuff back in the fall, so their um, new book, Claim the Sky, a superhero-themed one, will be coming out fall 2021. And uh, it is actually a co-owner of Monty Cook Games, Shauna Germain's birthday today. Happy so happy birthday, birthday Shauna Germain. Happy freaking birthday. birthday. Woohoo. Um, so thank you, Monty Cook Games, for sponsoring this and uh, being such a wonderful support to us. They have also donated a $25 gift card uh, for every episode of Heroes of the Reef. We're going to be playing four episodes, and so we're giving away four gift cards. Uh, Corey, do you want to... How does that work? How do people enter for the bot to do the gift card stuff? So, uh, all they have to do is be here, and we're going to select somebody from in the chat. Sweet. Do they have to be in the chat when we do the selection, or do they just have, have to have been here at some point? When we do the selection. Um, when we do the selection. Yes. Cool. So just we are going to do it. Yeah, stick around. We're going to do it at uh, the end of the night was the plan, right? We happy with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll do it at sure. the end of the stream. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll just hop right into it. Right on. Cool. It is the first annual Sentinel Fair at the Reef Mall. Vendors and visitors have turned out to celebrate Breaker Bay's homegrown hero team, and all six of those local celebrities are scheduled to make an appearance. It's $100 for one of their signatures of the junior members of the team. Double <laughs> that for Magus, Gambler, or Geyser. Damn. So... The interior of the mall has been set up like a mini convention center. There are booths, there are people, the fountain in the in the middle has been dismantled and covered with a stage. Ooh. There's a couple of seats, there's some stand mics, there's some like audio equipment around it, and there's a moderate crowd moving in and around and going into the stores and uh, just having a good atmosphere. It's about an hour until the supers are expected to show up. So. Who wants to start? Where are you? Are we possibly on shift or is that up to us? 
that'll be up to you. Let's call this a Friday evening. Fun things go down on Fridays. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Sorry. Go I ahead. Was, I was just going to say that I think um, Ruby would be finishing up her shift. She would get that, like, after school Friday shift to get it kind of over and done with. Um, and I assume Topher's kind of hanging out, waiting for Ruby to finish. You know it, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, describe Ruby and the record store. Awesome. Okay. So Ruby is, um, she is about 16, has crazy long, just like unruling hair that is like kind of curly, kind of straight, kind of just all over the place. Um, think a little bit like just a mane really. Um, and then other than that, she's got like kind of quiet features, doesn't wear a lot of makeup, kind of a little bit hippie, a little bit skater, um, kind of the hipster that would say, I'm not a hipster because I'm not a hipster, right? Like, that's not cool <laughs> to be a hipster. Um, works at an old record store, loves a big mix of music. So anything, um, really anything other than um, kind of twainy, complaining about my life type music she's into. Yeah, and so the record store for the record, a little bit old and dusty, um, and then uh, your manager, sort of an older guy, probably sitting on the couch in the back listening to some music and not paying attention at all. Yeah, so like really, I just spend most of my shift drawing and sitting there waiting for customers to come in and, you know, waiting for Topher to bring me some uh, ice, ice drinks. All right, Topher, what do you walk in with? Uh, Hofer was staring at the record store from the bench that's like across, like <laughs> counting down the seconds for his bud to get off. He's got a partially melted ice cap because he bought it way too early and he didn't really think it through. Um, but uh, he figures Rube won't mind. I mean, like, he didn't mean it. It's, it's nothing really. And uh, he's just going to kind of roll into the store and just be like, hey, man. You ready to go? I'm just, yeah, I'm feeling like it's Friday night. What are we going to do? Oh, and I should describe myself. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, Topher, also known as the Roach, is um, kind of a lanky, uh, scraggly looking teen. He's got long sort of beachy blonde hair. Um, and uh, yeah, he's basically... Uh, looks a little bit awkward. He stands kind of funny. He's just kind of looks a little bit clumsy. Um, but uh, yeah, he's just kind of chilling and feeling the vibes of the store and just waiting for what we're going to do next. And his partner in crime, Ruby, is usually going to be telling him what he's supposed to do. So that's what he's waiting for. And yeah. the vibe is definitely different right now because there are so many more people in here than usually there is like your your bench would have been a little bit more crowded and you might have um more variety of food because there's like there's like food trucks outside and there's like carnival food like there's um mini donuts and churros the lemonade stands that changes basically, everything basically Every, like... I, I miss going to cons <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love. Okay, well, then Aww. that does change a little bit of the snackage that I brought. I think I probably got one of everything, um, just going stand to stand. And I have just an, an like insane amount of food in my arms, basically, just as I bring it through. I'm like, Rubes, check it out, man. There's tons of food. You got to come over here. Oh, man. Okay, so so Ruby walks. Oh, I walk over to Topher. Um, and we're like, I'm quite petite. So I kind of come over to Topher and I grab one of the bags and I'm like, what the hell is in this? Why is it so heavy? Oh yeah, man. I, I don't know. It's, just, I just like everything, man. Like everything. You just take like, first of all, you start with like a mini donut. Okay. And then you uh, take a corn dog and you kind of like shove it through and you like lace like a few mini donuts up in there. And then you get like a Mars bar. You just put that kind of on top. <laughs> I think they deep fried it. And then they like rolled it in sprinkles and something about ice cream and ah, oh, man, I just I don't know. It's just like it's like then, my dream. Then, it's my dream. Right? I'm, I'm so happy. And then do I wash it down with the lemon, the root beer? 
Oh yeah, no, like both. You just take because the, they're straws, right? So you like just put both straws in your mouth, man, and it'll just change your life. Like you will just be. It'll be so good. It'll be so good. I talked about this. You're gonna try to cut back on the garbage straws. You gotta save oh, the world. right, yeah, but like. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the straws, right? I was supposed to take those out so you wouldn't know. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what. What if I, what if I just like, these are just going to be my like new forever straws. Like I'll just bring them with me everywhere, Roops. I'll use them as like, you know, like bookmarks in my textbooks. Like I'll find other uses for them, man. Don't you worry. I know. They're, they're yellow and blue. I'm not going to forget. Yeah, right. Yellow and blue. Got it. Got it. Okay. Should we go find the other guys? We got a lot of food here. Yeah, we better go find him. Okay. But I don't know if I should. I mean, we. I, I got this for us. Like, I mean, I could share okay. a little bit. But well, you know. like, we gotta eat while we find them, and then we should probably go get it fresh with them, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Seconds yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, going kind of like clockwise around the mall. From for the record, we go to uh, Pages, the bookstore. Uh, is Alex Daniels on shift? Uh, much like Ruby, uh, he is currently finishing shift uh, to get prepped for the weekend and for whatever this nonsense chaos factory is that has arrived to the reef. Mm-hmm. And could you describe Alex? Uh, he's a tall uh, drink of water, sort of <laughs> uh, chiseled jaw and messy hair that uh, no matter how much he tries, it it just falls naturally handsomely. Uh, he's a notoriously a bookworm and sort of a stickler to the rules, uh, wearing his father's uh, leather bomber jacket. Uh, tall, thin, but uh, handsome as hell. Handsome as hell in cowboy boots. He is wearing cowboy boots. Are you wearing cowboy boots? Yeah. <laughs> I picture Respect. Abercrombie model in cowboy boots. Yeah, he's a CW character. So you're yeah. a teenage yeah. CW version of Harry Dresden? Wow. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 100% I'll take it. All right, and then... Um, I've changed my character, Merrick. I need to go back for a second. You need to change your focus? <laughs> I your need foci. to change <laughs> You're now a wizard? Maybe. <laughs> all right and then um next up is uh kick and shout uh now i feel like the dojo in the mall uh might be doing some demonstrations for this little convention maybe absolutely we would totally be doing a um you know exactly a demo for all these kids we or all these uh shoppers so I'd be um, at the front leading the demo, um, you know, doing all our highs and hoyas and all that stuff. How many um, boards do you break? I hold the boards for the kids to show off their talents now. I, I am letting them sell more tickets because i gotta get money in my pocket you know right so like i gotta get more memberships and the more memberships we get the more money i get the better weapons i can buy so i can better defend this city because my name is zack attack and i am here <laughs> to protect breaker bay and do you just buy like illegal firearms is that a side of your character we've never in encountered before uh, do you want to do you want to describe Zack Attack? Um, if I can remember how to uh, spell his command, yeah. So Zack Attack, Zack Boy is, um, you know, he's a uh, he's got dark hair. He wears his hat backwards. You know, obviously he's not wearing one right now because they're in the in the dojo and uh, kicking butt. But you know, he's like. You know, average-ish, 6'2"-ish height, you know, and, you know, medium build, I guess you would say. And uh, 16, and, uh, I don't know, you know, ready to kick some ass. I like the world that 6'2 is an average height. 
Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it's not that far off, you know. <laughs> um, okay, and then Zach's twin sister, Hattie, where is she? Uh, Hattie is also just finishing work at the candy store called... Rapper's Delight. Rapper's Delight. <laughs> that was the name of the candy store. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Hattie is uh, twins with Zach. And so they are the same age. And uh, where Zach is tall, she is short. She is... She is... She's stocky. Like, she's built. She's a thick girl. Um, and she's got beautiful, like, pink bubblegum hair that she usually wears up in pigtails. And um, she's often covered in a lot of accessories, multiple chokers, bangles, headbands, brettes, stuff like that. Um, she's kind of sportsy, but not in sports. But, like, I don't picture, like, rollerblading and stuff. That kind of thing. <laughs> She's a roller derby girl. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, she's just finishing off her shift by doing absolutely nothing, helping no customers, but instead stress putting together a bag of candy perfectly curated for backlash because her whole goal tonight <laughs> is to get that haughty backlash, a curated bag of candy. Okay, so his... um. His uh, costume is like blues and golds. Oh, but it's beyond that. It's like blues okay. and golds, but she's also like read like the teen beat magazines on his like favorite things. So she's grabbing some of his favorite flavors. Like she's going to show him how deeply she has stalked him. <laughs> not creepy read, at all. Does she Hattie read a lot of tiger beat? She doesn't, but she now she reads them when she sees him on, him on them picked up every cover that he was on <laughs> i need these he's been on a couple and she when she buys them she's like ew i don't read tiger beat i'm just here for the article and they're <laughs> like yeah i don't care at all and this quiz this quiz looks awesome and i guess tiger beat's great if that's <laughs> Did you know they grocery game. shop just like us and you know they are perfect for swatting um Lucifer whenever he gets too close to me. Don't you dare. Mm -hmm. Lucifer is an angel. Lucifer is a stupid piece of... Sorry, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer is Hattie's cat. He is literally just a tiny black floof and is just dumb as a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Zach. All right. Oh. And so uh, you're... Um, Ruby and Topher are bringing people together. You're gonna you're gonna try and find everybody as everybody's coming off of shift. Okay. Yeah, I feel like yeah, we're gonna like text the group thread that we got like meet at the fountain because that's like our cool place to meet because we're cool like that. We have got our own place in the. But Topher's pretty upset that like there's a bunch of people also sitting on the fountain. Like well, I don't fountains. get it. The fountain's been disassembled. There's like a rope around, like one of those velvety ropes around it that you can't get close because there's a stage there now. What? Okay, well, so, okay, so you, you go stand over there and I'll stand here and we'll just yell at each other and then everybody will move out of our way because they get annoyed. Oh man, we can just that is such area. a good idea. Yes, Urban. okay, I go, I'll do it, I'll do it. But before you do it, this is the perfect opportunity for our very first GM intrusion. What? No, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Bow, so, bow, bow, bow. Uh, uh, 2 XP, which I am going to hand over to Topher the Roach O'Neill. And uh, you keep one, and then you award one to another player. And so, basically, you, you move away from Ruby. You start going through the crowd. Uh, you're heading towards the stage, and a hand slaps down on your shoulder. And you turn around, and Mr. Fairbanks is right there. Head janitor, uh, bald head, kind of like a, a greenish overall type coat. Um, you can see like his, his cart of cleaning materials uh, is just off to the side. And he says he looks down at you and he says, Now I know that you're not going to cause any trouble... For this event 
Mr. O'Neill. Hey, Banksy boy, man, I was just thinking to myself, like, I have not seen you in so long, and like, I just missed you, buddy. I really did. I'm just going to give him a big hug. <laughs> and he's kind of like, oh, no. And he, he pushes himself away and he says, you may not have seen me, but there's a new security system here and we've been watching you, Topher. We know the stuff that you and your friends get up to. So be on your best behavior tonight. I always am, B. Don't you worry about it. And, uh, <gasps> hey, you know, yeah, yeah, Ruby. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, Talking to Mr. Banks over here. It's a great conversation. It's going really well. And Is he's he not mad at too? all. <laughs> what? Is he in a good mood today? <laughs> and he does one of these to Ruby. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, Ruby. He's looking like his aura is like probably between a yellow and an orange, which I have come to understand is not so great. So I'm going to give him some mini donuts. Oh, here you go. I give him some mini donuts. All right. Do you hand him like mini donuts or do you hand him a little baggie of mini donuts? Like with my own hand, because Topher just has no class. He just, just <laughs> like grabs exactly. his hand, not COVID exactly friendly at all. And just like... Just just like there's pocket lint and like a bonus smarty in there too and it's just like a handful like super smooth and fast he pulls out like a cloth uh rag like handkerchief sort of thing out of a pocket and puts it out you put them in there and he kind of just looks at them and turns around and walks over to his cart he sets them on top well that's something i think you're welcome <laughs> Hey, all right, you and then so you gather up. Did you get many donuts? Yeah, Alex, we got lots of food. Yeah, do you want some? Alex, do you want some donuts? Think fast. I'm going to start throwing donuts. I I'm two <laughs> feet away from you. There is no need to throw. So why didn't you catch it then if you're so close? Because you threw it when I was two feet away from you. Ruby, said, or... think fast. Or, Hattie's gonna come running across and, uh, say, Toss me some Jonah! Yeah! I just start throwing, like, all kinds of stuff. Mars bars, donuts, corn dogs, Can I do everything. the first roll of the night to see if I catch them? <laughs> sure. Make a speed roll to attempt to catch them. Like, I'm... Difficult difficulties. In. We're good. Should we just scream into the mics? Yeah. Would that be helpful, though? Yeah. Okay, then I won't do that. Are we back oh, now? Uh, okay. Yeah, we're all back. My apologies. That was my fault. Let's go. Tech happens. Was there a big giant red button that says cancel audio and you push yeah, that? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, Don't push, you that, push that Why'd you make it so big? Well, it's... What? The button? So that you, you wouldn't know, miss so it, that, yeah. Exactly. Make sure you don't hit it by accident. So, how do you... giant, you increase the chances of hitting it by accident, but... Sure and anyway, that's not important. That's not important. That doesn't exist. No. Hattie did so good, so can she, yeah, like you said, catch all of them? And on the last one, it's a really wild throw of, like, a mini donut, so she does, like, a knee slide and catches it in her mouth. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so just in case, I don't know how long ago the, um, the audio dropped out, but, um... Katie gave the experience to Jen and uh, started tossing a whole bunch of snacks and uh, Jen rolls amazingly awesome and catches all of the snacks, slides, mini donut in mouth. A beautiful. I Nobody cares. Amazing! I need this game to move, no, move the fast mini cheers. donuts really fast. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have mini donuts and now it's all I can think about. And then I thought about popcorn and then I wanted popcorn. So... I got popcorn for you, Alex. I give you a bag of popcorn. <sighs> okay, how much of that was in your pockets? <laughs> okay, well, of first it. of all, it's 
you're supposed to say like thank you, man, because like I I hold a ton of snacks over here on here. But no, that's great. Like, I... Maybe twenty percent, like twenty, maybe like twenty is better than your normal. That's fine. I'll take it. That's the awesome. Normally one hundred is what I'm expecting. So, Zach, Zach, we're over here. Zach, he's doing kick moves. Leave him. <laughs> and like Zach, like would like shoe at Hattie like with his hand. Be like, <laughs> oh, get the three-year-old to break the wood. Everyone loves when the three-year-old does it. That'll make you lots of money. Yeah, the little one's cute. Yeah. Kick the board. <laughs> so, what was, uh, what was he saying to you? Oh, the Mr. Banksy boy, our friend. Yeah, yeah. What did he, he say? Was, he was. Oh, okay. Well, like he says this every time, but he was like, "Okay, Topher, like everybody likes you, and you're a really chill dude, but you need to like not disturb them all, okay? So just." you know, be chill or whatever. And I said, like, have I ever let you down before? And he was like, well, no, man, but some people, you know, they might oh. think that. Okay. And then I gave him some donuts and I think we're still cool and everything, but you know, he just, I think he's all like, he's got his panties up in a bunch because of this fair or whatever. And he wants all these people to like, I don't know. And, oh, and you know what else he said, Rubes? It really freaked me out, but yeah. he was all like, the cameras have been watching you. You know, the cameras have been watching you. Oh, new cameras. I... The ones that we were looking at the other day. Yeah, I don't like it, man. I don't like those cameras. There's something up with them. I think we need to get another one. We figured oh, out yeah, what was I up with the cameras. We know what's up with the cameras. Okay, but Alex, what are we going to do about it? I don't know. It's not our property. We don't own them all. But, like, they're watching us and they're trying to steal my energy. That's not at all true. Zero percent. They're No, oh, sorry, 50 percent. They are watching yeah. you. Yeah, and they're stealing They're stealing our, like, special powers. Yeah. No, they're watching. They're specifically coded to sense for our powers. Yeah. It's and what I'm saying very quietly. Takes away our privacy, yeah. which is but, kind of our power. You're in I'm a public you, space. You have no right to privacy here. But are you sure they're not trying to steal my power? No one wants your power. I, hey, I feel oh. like everybody... Rubes, don't listen to him, man. Your power's yeah. awesome. I would like your power. First, so. I'd love to see it. It'd be cool. If we could. Maybe. <laughs> well, I just... I can't always control it yet, guys. Like, it's, it's really tough. And, like, sometimes... Roach brings me like an iced coffee and then all of a sudden it's boiling and I just don't know what to do all the time. And like I've melted records, guys. Like it's a problem sometimes. You probably shouldn't work in a place that is filled with flammable things. That's or... funny coming from a guy who works at a bookstore. Books are flammable, you know. <laughs> I, I'm well aware. I have control of my powers and they don't light things on fire. Oh, well, I don't know why we're talking well, about flammable stores, but I'm really it's, confused. No, it's not. It's. <sighs> so what are we going to do, guys? So the Sentinels are here. That's the cool. Sen the Sentinels will be here probably in like 30-ish minutes. That's um, going to be cool. But for now, there's uh, various booths and stuff that you can look at. Is there anything that anybody is looking for? Is or there going to be a line to do the meet and greets? There is a line for the meet and greets, but um, they're not letting you line up yet because they're going to come in and they're going to like give uh, like a panel in the middle and then it's going to break up to that. And there is a line for the mini donuts. Okay, Never don't worry. I already bought right now. like so many mini donuts. Like we don't have to wait in line. I I got in early, guys. I strategized. I don't mess around when it comes to food. My problem is that you mess around when it comes to everything, Topher. I know, but that's like kind of my charm, man. It's like I it, mean, that... it's sometimes charming. It's sometimes insanely aggravating. Ah, oh, you learn to love it. It's fine. 
But what like, can I say? how? I can't but, say like, mad Hattie, at you. How close do we need to be later? Like, do do we need to get there? Like, you said you wanted to like feel his sweat. Like, how close is that? Oh, that's very gross. I need to hand him this candy. He needs to take it from my hands and then eat it. That's a very suspicious thing and a cadence to say it in. How will I know if he likes it or not? It's not poisoned. It's... Is, are we certain of that? Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You guys. What if they're already in the mall? No, they're going to do a, a kick-ass, like, superhero entrance. No, they're probably just, like, sitting in, a, like, one of the empty stores with, like, a chair and a drink There's waiting no way. for your entrance. And we can first. They're going to come, like, flying through the ceiling and, like, you know, pose Alex, landing. They have to. You're really smart. Like, couldn't you, like, hack the cameras and see if you can find them? They probably are. They're, like, in a, like, fancy, like, green room where there's, like, only blue Skittles. Because uh, somebody just... Totally. <laughs> first of all, one, that's a crime, so no. Second of all, no. Okay. Why are well, blue Skittles a crime? Not the yeah. Skittles part. Like, infiltrating the computer systems of this mall part. Oh, I totally... Oh, but man, we already, we already did that, and then you were all like, eh, it's fine, it's not a big deal. And I was like, am I gonna go to jail? But you seem fine with it, remember? No, that is not... The recollection you have of that and the reality are incredibly different events. Somebody walks by and gives you a little bit of side eye. So you're in a public place while you're having this conversation. Yes, I know. Keep walking. Well, I, I just think that this is our fountain, so I give side eye to the guy that gave me side eye. Giant <laughs> stage yes. built over the fountain. A lot of scaffolding and stuff. Ru I don't know uh, what stage is made of. Hattie's going to look over at Zach, see if he's almost done. And she's going to give him like a significant look of like, Pretty obvious your sister wants you to hurry up. I can't just end it. It's the thing. I don't know when it ends. You now. <laughs> it ends four hours from when the Sentinels arrive. Your shift You're out of this is, game. Your shift is ending and somebody else is coming in after their office job to oh, take over. sweet. I love it. I guess I did have control of when my shift ended. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine a man walking in in like a full like like a gray business suit and he just rips it off wearing a gi underneath <laughs> and he's like it's karate time I'm good to go and I'm like that was a like $3,000 suit you just shredded in half so he's not even a super father? he's just a regular guy he's just a dude he's a <laughs> dude who he's and he's not even funny. like the master guy he's not like the top guy he's just like also has taken some lessons He's no, it's just a white belt. belt yeah, oh, he's, he's just really belt. wealthy and just really into whatever martial art you happen just to do. Penny suit. No. <laughs> it's just he's in I finance. Have Forty though. of these. So I mean, he's got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, yeah, Zach will get off shift, throw on his hat, and uh, switch into his regular street clothes. Just you know, regular old whatever jeans and t-shirt and whatever sixteen-year-olds wear. And it, he's got his superhero down, yes. backpack. Is and, that how everyone changes in this world now? Just ripping things off and there's always things underneath? <laughs> he tears his gi off, he's wearing his regular clothes, pulls a hat out. I, I it's something that people don't talk about. It's one of the superpowers that was given to everybody in the city <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> Except the rest of us don't have uniforms, so we just tear our clothes off. And we're like, <laughs> I didn't get one. I didn't get a uniform. Cool, cool. And then, yeah, that's it. Then he comes and joins y'all. He's like, hey. So when you come over, it's like, Zach, you're really reasonable. You are like, you've got a good head on your shoulders. Should we or should we not break into the cameras to see if the Sentinels are already here? Like, it's a good idea, right? So pros and cons, right? 
Um, right. We know these cameras are bullshit and stupid. Um, yeah, pro. So that's a pro for us breaking into them. Con, we shouldn't spy on superheroes because they'll come Con, back and Con, it's kill a crime. Us. Yeah, well, Oliver. Um, why don't we just go up to the roof? You know, it's never locked and wait to see if they come in. Oh, uh, Alex thought yeah. they were going to come through the ceiling. Yeah, I assume. Get them before they come through the ceiling. I assume this is a mall. I love that. I don't assume this is a mall. I know this is a mall. I assume <laughs> it's designed like a mall where over the main fountain area is skylights. Oh, you got it. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big so I, they're, uh, they're domey coming skylight. through that. <laughs> they're going to break through it? Oh, no. It, it's going to pull back? No. <laughs> 100% shattered glass. They replaced it. it just today too? with sugar glass. They've, uh, so, no, they just don't care and they will replace it because they have like a crew that just follows behind and it's like, we'll just fix it. It's fine. Right. Of course. Uh, guys, I, I just wanted to say one thing. I'm totally on board with the, the idea of going to the roof, but. Mr. Fairbanks made it sound like, you know, he's watching us pretty closely. So I think whatever we do, we should try to be kind of sneaky or something, you know? Or we can just double check that he's bit We can make a distraction and yes. a diversion so that he's busy. <sighs> Rubes, like, yes. We just like spill a Slurpee or something. I don't know. And First then of all, busy. don't waste a Slurpee. Okay, what about this lemonade and root beer that I thought would be a good idea mixed together and it's really not? I have a better idea. You don't like it? A... Oh. I do. Okay, I, do. I have an idea of roots. What if we pour it into the fountain and it'll make a crazy mess? It'll be crazy. Yo, guys, I got a great idea. <laughs> if I just want to just... pause for one second. <laughs> There's no fountain right now, Tove. There is a God. giant stage over top of the fountain. There is no fountain anymore. Don't say that, Alex. That was our special place. Like, I just feel like no one cares that the fountain is gone, except for Topher, apparently. <laughs> I felt so bad for Topher just then. <laughs> like, no. really emotional for a character who does not exist. I was like, oh, it's going to be back, buddy. It'll, like, it's just tomorrow. It'll but be I good. I really want to hear both Alex's and Zach's plans. Yeah. Plans. Okay, uh, Corey, Corey needs a break. Oh, go ahead, Amanda. Tove, the fountain's still there, I promise. Remember last year and your mom went to France for like two months, but she still came back? Yeah, the fountain I... will come back, I promise. Are you promise? Because I really didn't think she's coming back, but then she did. She didn't even tell me, but you know, <laughs> guys, uh, I don't know. This whole, I don't like change. I just really don't like change, you know, Tover it's really has affecting me. Whatever that, like, baby thing is, where, like, if object permanence, <laughs> it's just, if it's out of his view for too long, it's stopped existing. The fountain's Tover. gone! We have to bring the fountain back. It's, you can see it. Just pull the skirting back, it's right there. It's fair, Topher's probably been raised by a lot of staff who rotate in and out. Oh, that's very... Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a four-episode arc that we're going to need to pursue longer. It's, for... why to it's why Topher always likes to come over to my house. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, it roops my pal, you guys. I don't know. I just... And Ruby's parents never get rid of anything. No. That's very true. So everything's oh. very solid. And he... Oh, that's so, like, incredibly <laughs> deep. This is our... We're, like, 44 <laughs> minutes into the first episode. We can't get this deep already. It's got to be comical. <laughs> okay. Someone slips on a banana peel and falls down. It's it's okay, really comforting. For real, yeah. We for real, we need to we need to figure out where the stairs are. Then we need to make the diversion or the spill or whatever as far away from them as possible. Like maybe like Hattie can like phase over there, we can spill something and then we can jump back over to get up the stairs do, 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 so do, that do. he's distracted like as far away as possible. Okay. Hold on. I had a plan and then you guys started going weird. So guys, here's my plan. It's like super smart. You know, why don't I go all the way to the other side and use enthrall on him and just have him stuck there with me until you guys are done and you can, you know, give me a command Zach, or something. What yeah. the hell? What? We just go to the washroom and 
flush a bunch of toilet paper and it floods the bathroom. Oh, that okay, would work. You'll, you'll be in there for like a half an hour at minimum. The options we have are spilling the drink, toilet paper flushing, or enthralling. I think okay. all have their perks. I think I one of them has a significant negative. Yeah, I was worried that Zach might not be able to get away if he's enthralling him, and Zach, you really need to do Oh, no, it. that's... I meant the slushy thing. Oh. <laughs> but, I don't, yeah, but Zach but, needs to come up with us. So. Yeah, I... And, guys, what if it's not just Mr. Fairbanks we gotta worry about? Like, what if there's other people that are watching the cameras that are watching us? Or do we just we know think there are other people, people watching the cameras. I know, that's what I'm saying. We gotta be sneaky. That's all I'm saying. Heidi's gonna look at her watch. How much time until they're coming now? How much time have we spent on this plan? 45 uh, minutes. They've already they're arrived. coming in about 15 minutes. How do we get up there? Okay. You Bathroom? know how to get to the roof. All the kids here know how to get to the roof. Oh, then I feel like if we know that, like if all the kids know how, yeah. we would just go do it. Let's just go. Let's okay. just go. I agree. We're making this too complicated. 16 year olds don't plan this much, guys. <laughs> You guys were trying okay. to come up with the plan. I will be right back. So Alex heads directly towards the washrooms. Okay. <laughs> so as you're beginning to uh, sort of like head in the direction of the staircase and the utility corridors that are going to lead up that, you know, there's a terrible thing here. The locks are broken. It's easy to get up to this roof. Um, there is a booth that doesn't have um, a banner or name or anything, but it's sort of festooned with, um, like, new agey. There's crystals, there's books, there's incense. And uh, behind the booth, there is a middle-aged woman with, um, like, orange-colored braids and very large pigeon earrings, like, of a pigeon hanging from her ears. I love your earrings. And They're she says, amazing. Thank you. Um, care to hear your fortune? Yeah, I do. Are you going to like read my palm or my cards or like what? Well, how are we going to do this? Or tea leaves? What? And like she, she holds her hand out towards <laughs> you, just like palm up and uh, just waits for you to put your hand in hers. Okay. As this is so, happening, Hattie's in the background like an anime, just like impatiently pacing. There's steam coming off her head. I put, Hattie, you can go ahead if you want. Sorry, I got distracted again. Oh, wait. Okay. As you put your hand in hers, there is that Doctor Strange sudden moment of shock through your body. Like, you get knocked backwards, and for a moment... You can see her aura just completely around her. And then you snap back and she says, You are going to have a very interesting night. Okay. Good luck. Who are you? And she uh, smiles a little bit. And uh, she says, What? You're sorry, dead. what what was her aura like? Like, would I be scared? Would I be like? Hmm. It was. Uh. It was kind of like a mix where it was, um, sort of like two colors, and I would say kind of like a um, brown and a blue, but definitely in a a friendly manner, like a helpful manner, and she says, uh. Uh, Shauna Walker. It was nice to meet you, Shauna Walker. Thank you for the warning, maybe? And she uh, sort of makes a, a turnaround motion and points you towards the crowd. And as you, like, you turn, do you turn and, like, look across yeah, the crowd, I like, where she's pointing? Turn and look. Yeah. Uh, you can see everybody's energy just kind of floating above them a little bit. Can oh. she really see that? 
You, she can a little bit. This is a lot. Like it's oh. it's a lot more. Guys, something's going on. What is it, Rubes? What is it? I don't know. You know how like normally like I could kind of see the energy like if I focus. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just like a yeah. fucking rainbow of energy right now, guys. <gasps> Rubes, is it going Rubes. into the cameras? Um, let me try to focus on that. Okay, so make an intellect roll. I'm going to say that the difficulty is eh, pretty average, like a three. And this is to read the auras. Okay, so can we explain one more time how... So my intellect is 18, my pool is 14, and I have one edge and two effort. Okay, so if your intellect is 18, your pool should be 18 now. We've had a whole bunch oh. of time since our um, prologue games, so everybody fill up your pools back to uh, full. So, um, I would say that, yeah, to read these energies, there's going to be an initial cost. It's going to cost you two intellect points. So um, those come out of your pool. So yeah. like... I'm totally gonna encourage her with my encouragement, and while I maintain this ability through ongoing inspiring oration, your allies within short range ease one of the following task types. Um, task related to any skill. Oh, wait, that I'm trained in. Shit. Never mind. No, <laughs> not helpful. Are you trained in perception or reading energies? <clears throat> I'm sharp eye with his perception. Yes, I'm sharp eyed. I'm trained in perception because of sharp eyed. Then this will work. Fuck yeah. Woo! Okay. So with that and with my edge, it doesn't cost me anything then? No. Okay. So it's going to cost you two points to sort of like focus in. Your edge is how much? One or two? <laughs> one. So it's going to cost you one intellect out of your pool. And then the difficulty drops from three to two because he's helping you. Okay, thank you. He has eased yeah. the difficulty. So he has eased the difficulty, and now you just need to get a six or higher. 17, mofo. Woo! Can I All right. Tone the I believe that's down, a... like 30%. Oh, no, Patrick, I think that you should. That's one away from a minor, Tone it isn't stop. it? Oh, I refuse to stop the fuck off. There what we the go. Fuck? Stop the fuck off! <laughs> okay, so... um. The party. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you focus in. Me. And you begin to see sort of like the the differences in the uh, in the auras. Uh, some people have sort of like very vibrant energies. Some are a little bit lower. None appear to be like uh, moving towards the cameras, but you do see this sort of uh, flow to it. The people that are closer to the stage seem to be a little bit lower energy. And do I notice, like, do my friends have high energy or low energy? Uh, your friends definitely, uh, like, stick out amongst the crowd. And okay. if you start to sort of look for that, you do pick out other people in the crowd who seem to be glowing at the same sort of um, intensity as uh, you, you and your friends. Oh my god, guys! Oh my god, guys! Oh my god, guys! What? 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 I think I can see who has powers. No. Oh, shit. Ooh. Maybe not, but like, you guys are really, really, really bright. I swear to god, and, can like, you see Beth right now? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I don't Beth, know, I don't think so. <laughs> better not have powers. But... Can I see Kill Alex her. walking towards us? Uh, He's the washroom, right? Yeah, let's see. Um, first, I'll just a little bit of housekeeping. As you are seeing this, and then you turn around to look back at Shauna Walker at the booth, there's a little sign that says, back in five minutes. And she's gone. She's gone. No um, way. Shocked by that revelation. Who saw that coming? Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh so you're um you're looking for Alex? Yeah, I'm looking to see if I can see him 
Or if I can see anybody else that I know that has powers. But I figure I probably don't know too many people. Okay. So let's cut to Alex. You went to the washroom. Did you stuff those toilets full of toilet paper? Yep. I. Because all uh, commercial toilet fixtures or uh, toilet paper fixtures have a plastic <laughs> covering uh, with an easily accessible key. Uh, you can just pop it open by slapping on the top of it, mm -hmm. opening mm -hmm. the front. So I pull out the full roll of toilet paper, spool it down the drain, and one <laughs> short flush will instantly clog it without fail. And it will flood because they're usually nonstop. So it'll just flood water. I love this. Filling the entire washer. And if I know anything about uh, every bathroom design, the drain is above the level of most of the rest of the washroom. So it will flood the entire bathroom. Your Gross. time at the soccer center and at the hey, what are you uh, talking about? <laughs> has made you very good for this. It is using those two things that I have acquired the amount of information <laughs> that I have right now. Um. Okay. So, Alex is coming back out looking pretty uh, satisfied with himself. His feet are definitely wet. <laughs> And I'm looking for him, trying to yeah, find him. Yeah, and and he's he is glowing just like the people around you and like a couple of people in the uh, in the crowd. Guys, I That's see pretty, Alex. I see Alex, normal, and he's, he's as bright as we are. I think I can see powers. I mean, I mean, I, I don't. I should probably stop yelling this in the mall, guys. Yeah, first <laughs> of all, Rube, you're talking really loud. Hi, Alex. Hey. So, distraction is a go. Shouldn't take him okay, long to get that. I met a amount of people in this mall? No way. Who gave me powers to see powers? What? <laughs> we should go upstairs. Uh, Hattie's been really, really patient. Let's go see if we can find the guy. You just said uh, someone yeah. gave you power. What? What is... I walked away for five minutes, maybe, to the bathroom. Alex, you, what's walk. not to understand? I'll tell you on our way up there. But there was a lady, she had birds in her ears, and she touched Rube's hand, and now she can see colors. It's not that confusing, man. Keep up. I mean, yeah. even Roach gets it. <laughs> even I no. get it. Even Alex, I get it. I'm with Alex. Like, shouldn't we... It sounds dangerous to have people's auras being sucked away. Wait, I don't think Alex even understood that part. Um, I don't but, understand yeah. literally anything. I went to go flush things in a... I went to go flush things in a... I committed a small crime. That's vandalism. Hey, I'm proud of you, Alex. Time out. Time out, everyone. I think we have a real problem, though. So it seems is it like... that everything that Topher does is chaos? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. I'm just pointing out. I'm just... I'm... Are we fighting everyone? What's happening? Everyone went no, weirdly Hattie, silent. Hattie's, Hattie's digging in her bag while you talk. Okay, so I can see the powers, but people, their energy and their like powers and their like vibe and their aura and all of that, it's like darker and like almost like a shadow is around them when they're near the stage. Like so there's something going on. I think there's something under the stage that's like causing issues and sucking out the power. It's the cameras. There's so many cameras under the stage and it's sucking out the power. It might be okay, a trap. Okay, listen what to what the words the you just said were. You guys, it could be a trap for the Sentinels. Who's it gonna might... be on the stage? It might okay. be. This is unacceptable. Not... We cannot allow the Sentinels be trapped, guys. They're our fucking heroes. All right, they're mine. Let's, can we help? How do we help? I want to clarify one thing. Alex, do you have a plan? Yeah, Alex. There is no. It's, I do not have a plan. Fine. Zero percent plan. Screwed. Okay. There's no way they put cameras under the stage. Why would you put <laughs> they're cameras? They're not actually cameras. They're they're vibe Just sucking things. Suck your powers. Like, First of vibe. all, never say vibe sucking things ever <laughs> again. Uh, no, that's just a key should, base level. We should it just does. run under the stage. And just start breaking the things that are going to suck Roach. their powers Let's away. go, Roach. I would Let's like to maybe punch. find out what's doing it, okay. number one, instead of just punching things. Okay. The fountain's so under just there. Maybe one the way to find out. So maybe, okay, Hattie has something Hattie wants to say. I can see Hattie dancing. <laughs> it's, actually, candy. it's actually Jan. Uh, Merrick, can I yep. spend an XP to say I have something? Is that how this game works? 
Yeah, so you can spend one XP to do a player intrusion that adds uh, to the narrative. Oh, uh, it's not going to... One also thing, one other thing is that we also didn't um, like determine equipment. So a lot of you will just have uh, two expensive items written in, and you can just like, bam, my expensive item was this. I'm pretty sure I everybody's have, expensive item was a cell phone. I have a, I have a crossbow. Oh, you have a moped. There's a crossbow. Um, no, my thing isn't something that I'd have. Like, it is something that I'm spending an XP to have. It is not adding to the story, but I want it. Um, Hattie's gonna pull out of her bag. She's had a bag of candy ready for when someone does crime. And it's a yay, congratulations, you did small crime bag. And so she's gonna huck it at Alex, because he did a small crime! Yeah, That is adorable. I don't I, want... That don't want this. will be, like, just... Oh my god, I love my sister so much. But, like, catching himself being like, Hattie! She's a big loser. Uh, that doesn't cost an XP. That's just one of your inexpensive items. Yay! I just want I want her to have like secret bags of candies for different things that she thinks may come up, and one of them was, you know, one of us was eventually going to commit crime. So is First it like of all, um, all of you have committed several crimes? But you haven't. Congratulations! I is feel like... more bad about that having Daddy, gotten a um... prize for it. Hattie, I was wondering if you could maybe give me some hints about what some of your secret candy bags are for. I'll do it. Like, you just tell me. I'll do it. But, Roach, you'll be so much happier when you discover them. It's your quest. Oh. Hey, but it's my quest. I, I can see their their energy's getting lower and lower. It's really sad, guys. I yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. We, Side note, people we are go. dying okay, maybe everybody. near the stage. Let's, guys, let's run under the stage and be reunited with our wonderful fountain again like I always wanted. And I just take off running. <laughs> towards the so stage. I'm going to explain the, uh, the construction of the stage. Jen, did you have a question first? No, I was going <laughs> to exactly say, like, I don't, it's a fountain. There's no under. Yeah. So that might be what happens in that Topher hits it, but um, just explaining. So the uh, the fountain is, you know, the um, the stonework that comes up, and then what they've done is they've taken off the middle part, which is all mechanical. They've emptied the water, and then they put a flat stage over it with a with a little uh, curtain coming down, and then they've got um, the velvety rope around about another f four or five feet away from that and the stage 100%, 100%, is 100 percent uh, what i imagined it's square it's about like uh 20 30 feet square on, on each side not like square. all right let's just just hop this velvety fence and and go for it man right, so i mean there's the not much in the way of security yeah like what amount of people are around here just general people uh, general people in this area, call it like 200. Yeah. So like it's a mass of people. Yeah. Okay. Should we, are we like distracting? Like, no, okay. um, I, so. Cause people are going to notice if like someone runs oh, through the velvet rope underneath the stage, people while, are going to notice that. While Alex As you're looking around and seeing that you see, uh, Mr. Fairbanks, uh, wheeling his cart to the washroom. <laughs> and as Now's Alex is chance. talking, I walk up to the um, velvet rope and I, to the guy that's at the front of the, like I push my way to the front guy that's at the front line. I'm like, poke him on the shoulder. Hey, yo, that guy just stole some. Go get him. And then I don't even wait to see if he turns around and I just start limboing under the velvet rope and slide <laughs> under. <laughs> All right. And so you, you slide under the velvet rope and you're moving towards it and there's a bunch of people around just staring at you and they're just kind of huh somebody pulls out their phone to record yeah, so, yeah i follow as this is happening because we were far away from this well like relatively far away from the stage do i see their energies getting lower as they're going closer to the stage like do i see are they less bright um it is getting a little bit lower, but it's definitely uh, like a slow trickle. 
it doesn't seem like you know they're moving towards it and going like oh, oh no like it's you just see it slowly slightly dimming not not something that would be very concerning just something okay. noticeable the people that she saw dimming earlier were they regular people or the glowing lanterns of perhaps powered individuals regular people the glowing lanterns uh for the most part seem to be staying away from the stage uh Hattie's also going to follow Zach, but she's going to slap the phone out of the hand of the person who's recording as she goes by. Oh, what? That's, That's rude. Why? That's rude. I knew okay. I should have gotten the case. I pick <laughs> it up for him. I pick it up for him and I uh, charge it and ex like overpower it. <laughs> Shazam style. Whoops. Like, oh, uh... something happened with your phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to grab Ruby's hand and say, Ruby, we can't spend too much time thinking, man. We just gotta act. And I start pulling you towards the stage where the rest of us are, too. I'm like, ah, but okay, but you gotta go fast, because, like, it's kind of draining, but not super draining, but, like, kind of draining, so you gotta be careful. Um, and then could I use Ward? Can I, like, put up a shield around myself? Sure. Uh, read out Ward. What's that do? Um, so you have a shield of energy around you at all times that helps deflect attacks. You gain... Mm -hmm. Plus one to armor, and it's an enabler. You fancy. Okay, cool. But before we figure we that out. What Ruby what, does. How was the camera being held? Was it in landscape or portrait? This is crucial information. Oh, the phone guy? Yeah. Phone guy was landscape. <laughs> okay, okay. At least he had some going for him. Not before he has it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point something out. Is that two of our party members is uh, a constantly snack-finding hippie boy uh, whose best buddy he calls Rubes. You know, like Scooby-Doo. I'm Scoops. aware. Rubes. It's one of those Rubes! <laughs> it's amazing. And also, he's super rich. It's Mystery Incorporated. It's amazing. Okay, so... I love it. Hattie is Vel... Or no, Hattie... How do you use Daphne? Use Daphne? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Velma. <laughs> yeah, you are. Velma. You're Velma. There's nothing wrong with being Velma. Velma's the best. I just. <laughs> so oh my god. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I mean, I that, dropped my glasses. <laughs> that stitch is hit. Uh, I'm that was you. Though. You are Scooby Doo. That was you. you before you got surgery. So Zach needs That's to true. get a van. Yep. Yeah. Oh God, our mystery egg. Okay. So, anyways, uh, what are you looking for under this stage? What are uh, What are you trying to do? Find tech. Okay. Uh, so Ruby, just like flip up and Ruby, look. Like, yeah, can you see the energy? Too. Like, is it like funneling to a certain place? Can I use scan? Yeah. You can, can definitely you use skills. scan. I've just realized that for so long in this game, I forgot that we have cipher system abilities. <laughs> yeah. And that I was, I just thought we were playing a cool teen game. Where we just role play about teen life? Jen, you're uh, adding that to the chat. Oh, oops, sorry. That's okay. Um. So yeah, so, I would Amanda. like to scan the area. Um. So yeah. scan. Do you want me to read it out or? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So scan. You scan an area equal in size to ten foot cube, including all objects or creatures within that area. The area must be within short range scanning your creature or object always reveals its level you can also learn whatever facts the gm feels are pertinent about the matter and energy of that area for example you might learn that the wooden box contains a dice or device of metal and plastic you might learn that the glass cylinder is full of poisonous glass and that its metal stand has an electric field running through it that connects to a metal mesh in the floor you might learn that a creature standing before you is a mammal with a small brain However, this ability doesn't tell you what the information means. This, the first example is you don't know what the metal or plastic device does. In the second, you don't know if stepping on the floor causes the cylinder to release the glass. 
In the third, you might suspect that the creature is not very intelligent, but scans, like looks, can be deceiving. Many materials and energy fields prevent or resist scanning. Okay. Act. And so how much does it cost? Two. Okay. So then with your intellect edge of one, you spend one intellect and you scan the area in front of you. What does that look like as Ruby sort of scans? Um, I hum to myself as I scan. Um, and right now, the song that is stuck in my head is Pocket Full of Sunshine. So I am humming Pocket Full of Sunshine. I got a pocket, got a pocket. I got a pocket. I got a pocket. So Ugh, bet, worst song ever. <laughs> I love that movie a lot. It's a really good movie. It's a it's funny, funny so movie. Good. Okay. Um, what? Who told you? <laughs> we had a plan. Yeah, so I start like Henley scanning teaching. it and I'm like dancing kind of by myself and I'm just kind of looking all around. Um, but my eyes are closed when I scan. Okay. And there's a person behind you. Um, oh, sorry, so Alex hasn't stepped in into this. It's just Hell the first no. floor. Okay, um, so there's Alex is out there and there's a bunch of people out there and someone like very apathetically is like, I don't think they're supposed to be behind the behind the rope. Alex turns to them and goes, they're not. <laughs> okay. And so Ruby is scanning in front of her and um, she senses uh, the sort of like aluminum construction of the stage, uh, various bits in that, and then a fair amount of uh, iron-based paint. You also do sense energy flowing past you and into the paint. Okay. Guys. So, uh, the, oh, sorry. The paint is stealing the energy. What? Um, what? and then Alex, or sorry, Zach, that's me. Alex <laughs> is you. Um, you Zach will, Yep. With, like, a thought... Uh, make his force field shield, which is just bright red, yellow, and blue um, shield that is round, basically Captain America's shield, and <laughs> smash what I picture. some of the wall with the shield, um, trying to chip off some paint. You mean the stage? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, the paint is underneath. Like it's on the, the underneath thing. side of the, and so you're going to punch down into the into the uh, stage. Yeah, this... whatever it takes. Are you on top of the stage or underneath the stage in the aluminum structure? Mm -hmm. I, well, I went under the rope. You went under the rope, and, and then... so there's a couple of feet, and then there's like a black curtain yeah. that goes right. down to the floor. So you yeah. could pull up the curtain, and you could punch up, or you could climb up onto the stage, and you could punch down. Can he block himself with the curtain? Uh, yeah, Kay. exactly. I was yeah. like, uh, and then close the curtain behind me and punch up. All right. Now, so now no as a very complicated way of saying what I You said. went under the stage. Yeah. Very complicated way. It's all right. You pull up the curtain and um, like there's the uh, the wall of the fountain in front of you. And then you can see underneath this sort of like dull... Uh, silvery glow uh, that is emanating from some symbols that have been painted onto the bottom of this uh, stage. Jen, yes. Did Ruby, did she tell us that the, pi the paint was iron? She said uh, the paint is stealing energy, not yeah. that it was iron. Lack. No, um, that's too de definite for Ruby. Right? I would also say uh, in level terms, Ruby would also know from the scan that whatever effect this is, is a level 5 effect. Shit. <laughs> Someone is planning a fucking ambush for these goddamn sentinels. It's All right. really powerful, guys. So, uh... <laughs> Zach is gonna go ahead and punch it. So go ahead and punch it. And, um... It is... A difficulty 7 to damage it. Cool, but my uh, force field shield is a light weapon, so that eases it. 
Nice, so that drops it to a six. Yeah, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Uh... You, you can need an 18 or higher. Spend, <laughs> I don't have enough hands uh, to show 18. You can spend XP to make it lower, correct? Screw you it. You can spend I'm... effort points, yeah. But effort. I, I, I'm just going to be punching it to try and chip it. Like, I'm not actually... That might disrupt it, though. It's, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's fine, though. Right? All right. So you throw your punch into it. Uh, go ahead and roll. I'm trying to... Do you have a might edge? Because you could spend effort and... Yep. Or, sp or speed, because it's a light weapon. He can do either. Yeah, there you go. Get it to a 15. Maybe I, I just mm -hmm. don't want to spend any points. You just have to. That's literally this game. Spend the <laughs> points. This game is spend spending points. Spend the points. Fine. Spend While your points, the Corey. Points, I'm going to draw attention to my cool t-shirt. RPG <laughs> Alliance Con 2020. Shout out yeah. to Vicky and the team from Calgary. Vicky! I agree. Vicky's really, yeah. really nice. I don't know what's happening, yeah. but... She's really cool. I got an She's eight, amazing. so I do no damage. All right, so what happens is um, the Captain America-type shield appears around your fist, and you slam it in, and you can feel your hand slowing down and then not actually connecting to the uh, to the stage. <gasps> do what I see this? I'm following my brother. <laughs> he's behind the um behind the curtain. I was but... gonna try to get behind with him. Okay, so you're gonna go under the curtain. Then Bye. that's uh that is where people are when things happen. I have a what? question also. Yeah. Eric. So I I'm assuming I was with Ruby. Um, but also does the paint like the symbols of the paint, does it look fresh or is it like dry? So you can't quite see unless they're holding up the um the the curtain uh oh, okay. it, it was uh, like she sensed that there was uh paint there and then when uh zach went under he saw the symbols but okay, got you. now things happen but amanda has a question okay amanda, amanda go quick, first quick comment first would I be able to see the symbols? Like, can I use my magic training to see if I know what they are? Only if you go under and take a look at them. Uh, you and Roach are still sort of on the outside. Should we go under there, Ruby? What do you think? But you can't because something happens. Yep. No time. This is where people are. Alex is on the outside of the uh, velvet rope. Uh, Ruby and Roach are standing like in the middle with a bunch of people watching them and like people are pointing as the twins go underneath. The lights dim. Then Ruby, Roach, and Alex see above a young man in a blue superhero suit stand on the railing of the second floor of the uh, of the mall and he kind of like puts his hands out and then he somersaults forward and lands perfectly on the stage it's backlash it's a graceful perfect landing and the twins can hear the thump as his feet sort of land you notice uh he's wearing the the um beautiful sort of like skin tight blue suit with a little bit of gold at uh, uh, wrists and, and boots and belt. Uh, he's got a long silver bow staff, but he seems to have added a flowing red cape. That's going to get in the way. <laughs> Old choice. Oh my God, Hattie, Hattie, somebody landed on us. Who do you think it is? Oh my God, 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 oh my God. Oh we have a big actions, Merrick? Uh, he's going to start talking. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he basically lands and he's he's exulting in the uh, in the applause as people as people start to cheer. And then somebody kind of like reaches out and tries to tug uh, <laughs> like Ruby and Topher back. Like, get out of there. You're not supposed to be there. Uh, so what everybody can take a quick action before he starts to talk while he's kind of doing that walk around movement. I'm going to use fleet of foot mm -hmm. and sprint towards him 
to try and tackle him off of the stage. Okay. Okay. Because um, Ruby told us what she sensed, correct? She yeah, said that she it said was, that it was energy taking is energy. Pulled into, paint. Yep. Yeah. The paint is stealing the energy. Yep. I mean, you. I don't think you heard the paint part, but you knew there was something stealing energy at the stage. Well, I'm like four feet away. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So fleet of foot, you use that power. You can move super, super fast. You've got to make a might roll. Cool. Uh, Backlash, you know from his powers, and you know what? Uh, you're kicking it off. I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a music change. Uh oh. I'm trying to save the Sentinels. You're trying to save them, but that's not what it's gonna look like. Nope, it's not. Do it's I gonna not... be one of those misconstrued sentiments. Do I have an extra XP that I can give to Patrick? Nope. No, I used it already for Hattie, right? Okay. Okay. But you can so, spend your XP that you earned on his roll to have him re-roll if you so choose. I don't think you can spend on other people's rolls. It says any roll. Yeah, I think that's any of your own rolls. Okay. I've never played it that you could spend on somebody else's. You are the god no. of this game, Eric. We, uh, we're sure gonna, you, you, are. you spend it on your own rolls. That is that is your um, your resource to use on yourself. Okay, so what you know about backlash as you suddenly start sprinting forward super fast, people are cheering and the moment slows down. The thing about backlash is he's fast. He's fast and he's graceful. It is a level seven difficulty for you to attempt to uh, tackle him. That is incredibly difficult. I like the music. Is this an attack roll? Um, I would say that you're basically trading your uh, your damage for an effect. Yeah, I don't want to hurt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, help him. um, there is a rule that uh, you reduce damage by like eight and then you can just get a major effect if you succeed, but I think it hinders the difficulty as well. So that puts you at an eight to start. But it is considered an attack. Well, I just mean because I have the power shift of accuracy, so attack rolls are eased by one. Yeah, I'd say that this, uh, this counts for that. Okay. But what if like what if I don't mind about hurting him? Like, it's okay to tackle him off the stage physically. I'm not trying to punch him and do damage to him. I'm not trying for that. I just want to get him out. Then I, I'd say that that's basically... Is that a major effect? Is that... Yeah, it's a major him? effect. Getting so him you're out trying is a major to, effect? Yeah, you're trying to get a 20. Because okay. like a minor effect is just kind of knocking him back. A major mm -hmm. effect would be like tackling him out of the way and getting you out as well. Does being trained in initiative help here? No. Mm, of course not. No, at post not. <laughs> but of course. But of course. Uh, then I will also spend uh, some effort. Okay. Oh, that's not what I meant to click. And you said it was a might roll? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so, yeah, here we go. For a major effect, you subtract eight from your damage, and the attack is hindered by two steps. But oh, if you succeed, you do it. I just, I so, bet physically I can't do it then. Even if I spend might, it brings it to a seven. Mm. Which is a 21, which I cannot roll on a d20. I mean, he's a fast superhero. Chat's pretty yeah. bloodthirsty. Do you have two levels of effort? Have you have you spent for I that? I don't know. I spent up? for extra edge, not effort. Does fleet of foot help me at all here? It allows you close to close the distance as one action rather than moving as an action because well, you're further out in the stage. Move if I spend speed and make an action. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. 
Because uh, normally, if we were in an initiative, you'd have to take a turn to get up onto the stage. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try it anyway. Even if I fail. Okay. I like it. Because um, it's what I'm going to do. Do it I feel he's in danger. And I feel like... Uh, I want to. I want to try and help. I'm impulsive now. Okay. I don't. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> not even close. Even spending effort. Nope. Nope. Okay. But not a one. Not a GM. No, I rolled a ten. Okay, donkey. All right. So, um, what does it look like as you run up and get nearly to him? Um. Basically, just like a a, a jump over the rope. And then a quick sprint up onto the stage, and then a leaping dive to like try and uh, FBI agent save the president uh, from the line of fire. And then okay. he just steps out of the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, like he does this beautiful, nearly dancing sort of move and slides to the side, and you just go through air, and uh, you like hit the hit the stage and slide a little bit and fall off. And he kind of looks and he goes, "Whoo!" There's a lot of enthusiastic fans in here, and everybody shouts. God damn it. Uh, we need to get an action, right? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Hattie's action is going to be to, like, look up over the stage, because we were, like, crouched below, weren't we, or something? Is it possible for me to look up? You're under. Uh, yeah, if you, like, back out from underneath the, um, the curtain. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do, like, that thing where... Are we lying down? Because it's so... I mean, I picture you crouching, yeah. Oh, okay, I expected anything where you're like lying on your back and you just push with your feet and go like, Wee! and then it's gonna peek up on stage and fangirl super hard. Candy. <laughs> what? Oh, hand it to him. Um, I think um, I don't know if we're in initiative or if I can take an action at this point. Mm. I have an um, idea. I'm gonna let everybody take one action to say what they're doing. And then he's going to uh, go into cutscene mode. So what do you? What is? Uh, what is Roach doing now that uh, you've seen him land and you've seen your friend Alex shoot through the stage and slide off? Um, I think Roach is gonna like notice. Okay, he's gonna think. Oh, yeah, we got to get him off this stage. And then seeing Alex like almost get him. Uh, he's just going to kind of look at Hattie, who's fangirling, and say, uh, please forgive me for this man. And then I'm going to use push and try to kinetically, uh, uh, telekinetically push him off the stage. Okay. It only looks like we're trying to kill one of the super <laughs> famous superheroes. And it's only one of them. Where are the other five? They They're going to arrive in right away. shortly. It's going to um, get much worse very fast. All right, so you telekinetically push at him. Once again, he has a level <laughs> seven for reflexes. So, um... Right. What, uh, what is your telekinetic push powers uh, name? Um, so it's uh, a special ability called push. Um, you te telekinetically push a creature or object um, an immediate distance in any direction that I wish. I must be able to see the target, which would, must be my size or smaller, and they can't be affixed to anything. Okay. So what you do is you spend the two that it costs to activate the ability. If you have an intellect edge, you uh, discount that. I do. Yeah. And I have an intellect edge. Cool. And then you roll an intellect test against his... Uh... Hmm... You telekinetically push. So I would say that reflexes probably don't ha help against telekinetics. You're Can't pushing against him. Yeah. Um, so it's a level five. I mean, to be fair, I think you're right. But you don't always have to see what's pushing you to react to it either. Well, and based on Backlash's powers, I had to think about it. Hey, Jen. Remember how we're on the same team and Merrick's on a different team? No, Jen's convinced me it's a seven. <laughs> Do you see what you because did Because although he can't step out of the way of it, 
he can brace himself against it. And Backlash's powers are that he sees about five seconds into the future. Cool. Whoa! Thanks, Dan. Thanks. That's sweet power. No problem. Okay, cool. So with that, if then, he dies yeah, because it's of it, it's your fault. <laughs> so it's no. a seven, which means you need to roll a twenty-one. So you're gonna want to spend effort uh, to reduce the difficulty and try and get it down. Okay. Um, so if you spend I have an uh, effort of two. Oh, nice. So you can spend five intellect points to reduce the difficulty by two steps. Three for the first step, two for the second step, and that'll bring it down to a difficulty five. And then you need to roll a 15 or higher. Okay, perfect. I will do that. Do you have an intellect edge? Yes, I do. An intellect edge. Yeah. Yeah. So your total spend is seven minus your edge. So if your edge is one, you're taking six points out of your intellect. Perfect. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to roll a d uh, d20. Yeah, 15 or higher. I believe in you! I, uh, I'm afraid... I rolled it in the chat. I rolled a two. Yeah, that's a two. <laughs> But wow. it's not a, an automatic GM intrusion. So that is not great. a GM intrusion. Um, so I is there anything? Actually... Is, there anything... Oh. is there anything that Ruby or Zach want to do? No, nah, yeah. Zach's just going to be like, yo, 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 let me see, let me see. I'm just like pulling at her. That's <laughs> okay, and then Ruby? I want to go under. Okay. Ruby slides down underneath yeah. the stage, and you can see this um, uh, symbol that has been drawn, or maybe a group of symbols underneath the stage that's been painted on. And they are glowing with sort of a silvery light. Can I use magic training to see if I know what the symbols mean? Or what they're, like, in reference to, maybe? Yeah, for sure. So go ahead and make a roll. Um, it would be a... It's a level five, so it's a level five. And, and then and then you've got um, magic training. Is that a skill? I think it's a skill, and so you've reduced the difficulty uh, to a four. Yes. Perfect. So you, uh, without spending anything else, just need to get a 12 or higher. 16. 16, okay. Someone um, did something. So, these uh, symbols are incredibly similar to something that you have seen before. Um, the artistry is very, uh, it, it's close to what you saw in the journal that you found from your uh, science teacher, Dr. Deborah Danthris, who was the one installing the uh, cameras here at the mall. Uh, the effects that you see sort of like layered in here are uh, basically twofold. It is an energy uh, funnel that is building up to a defensive measure, which is uh, meta knowledge, one of the reasons why uh, the fist couldn't uh, hit it because it's it's got this sort of like energy uh, repelling charge that's building. So, everybody's sort of taken one action, and uh, the uh, Backlash, who was about to start, like, speaking in something, basically dodges out of the way of this uh, second uh, attack, and he pulls his staff out. And everybody cheers, because they think, this is choreographed. We're getting a cool, like scene, and, like, they're going to do some stuff, and he's looking around. And so he's got the the Nightwing style little black mask and he's got his hair pulled up into a little like tight bun at the back and he's got this martial arts stance out and he's looking across the crowd and he turns and he looks down at Alex and right at that moment a golden sort of dome like structure of energy starts to uh, build up from the outside of the stage and snap into place over top. 
And that's where we'll go ahead and take a quick break. What? God damn oh, it! Sure. What? You can't do that to us? Come on! <laughs> so we'll take a quick uh, five-minute break. Be back here at 940. Just refresh your water, drinks, get snacks. Can we do it? And then... Snacks. Sorry, what's that one? Is it, is it 10 or too long? No, let's do 10 minutes. We'll be back at 945. Awesome. And we're back. Welcome yeah. back to Heroes of the Reef, this superhero stream uh, sponsored by Roll20 and Monty Cook Games. Uh, if you were hanging out over the break, we figured out the giveaway bot. And so to enter, you type heroes, all lowercase, in the chat. You get entered into the draw, which we'll do at the end. Yeah? Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this golden dome has just appeared over the stage. And, um, in the, well, first, as the golden dome appears, there, oh, we've, uh, we've had a quick little drop. Just wait a second while Patrick reconnects. Patrick has become G Arc. It's fantastic. Oh no! Oh, no. Katie became G Arc. Amanda became Katie. <laughs> Jen's Merrick. Merrick's Amanda. I'm Whoa! Oh, oh no! All the issues. Oh, <laughs> it's, so it's back. Amazing. Patrick, hey. you're muted. Patrick, you're muted. Yeah, I'm super muted. Everything's <laughs> fine. I muted my headset. I clicked on the wrong thing because I was like, "This sounds like Cell Dweller." Clicked on it. Yeah, hey, I'm it is. Good. And then. Uh, you know, chaos. Chaos, chaos ensued. Yep. Okay. So, this golden dome rises up around, and uh, Backlash inside holds it and, like, looks around. But then there's a burst of energy, and the entire crowd is flattened. Like, people are just knocked back off of their feet. This is a level four knockback effect. So if anybody doesn't want to be knocked back, that would be Roach, Ruby, or Alex. You need to make a might defense roll I at think a difficulty of four. Ruby's under the stage now. Oh yeah, Ruby went under. Yeah, let me move Ruby under the stage. Am on I this. prone? Like, am I not able to be knocked back? If you fail, you'll go prone. So I'm good now, like after diving, I got to my feet and I was good. Oh yeah, you leap, you leapt across the stage. I had you out yeah. in the audience. Um, okay, then <laughs> uh, you're still prone. So really it's just Roach making a might defense roll to see if you get knocked over. Okay, I um, and I, I'm also gonna ask you, how does this affect my absorb kinetic energy ability? I would say that this absolutely applies to that. Okay, perfect. Um, so I just got to make a regular d20 roll, and then if I fail, I'm prone? Yeah, so you need to get a 12 or higher because it's a difficulty 4. I got a 14. A 14. You are not knocked prone. Uh, Roach is one of the few people standing as, the, um, as it just blows out in a, uh, a wave of force from the stage. The uh, velvet rope goes down, all the people are knocked down, uh, uh, booths are skidding, and then you see you standing in this area, and you look around, and there are several forms, uh, people also standing, who had braced themselves. At which point, Corey, I'll get you to move us over to the roll 20 map. <gasps> so exciting! Oh. And 
as the map pops up, uh, special thanks to Kidney Boy on yeah. Patreon, who uh, designs all of these beautiful modern maps and uh, gave us permission to use them on the stream. So if you want to see more of those, go to patreon.com slash Kidney Boy. I feel like I lived in this mall. <laughs> and we are going to just quickly... Well, that's not going to help. I'm going to just get rid of that. I don't need that right now. I am going to take these, and I'm going to drop these on the token layer. Yikes. Ooh, there's a bunch of people that are standing up, while the rest of the crowd have just kind of Not suspicious at down. all. Do they look aggressive? Uh, they definitely look a little aggressive. They're in defensive forms. Um, if everybody could please roll me initiative. Oh, but. Oh, but no. You need to beat a level three. So if you get a nine or higher, you will be going before the NPCs. So my initiative rolls are eased, so I need to beat a six. You need to beat a two, so you need to get a six or higher, yeah. Bitter. And I'm trained. Is that the same? Same thing. I got get a wrecked. two. Oh no! Our real Zach! Slow, Zach! He's staring at symbols and is very confused. All right. No, I and... accidentally kicked him in the face. No, I'm just <laughs> so starstruck. I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. All right, and what have we got for uh, Roach and Ruby? Okay, Ruby with the two. I got a 10. Okay, and then you don't ease the difficulty, so you succeed. No, never mind, because that was a difficulty three, which is a nine. Those are maths. <laughs> okay, so before anything else happens, Alex, Hattie, and Roach can all take an action, and you can take them in whatever order you'd like. How did you know what I got? Because you told me. Oof. Thought I went crazy for a second, but Patrick also didn't hear me say it. Okay. I'm pretty sure I heard you say it, though. I didn't say anything about mine, either. No. Oh, no. So that's what happened, was um, the two of you both gave, like, a thumbs up, as in we succeeded. So yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I threw up the horns. Yeah. But... Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, get, I didn't get the number. That's no, fine. I was like, I didn't I say it. I rolled a 16. I I... <laughs> yeah, and we got Zach and Ruby going behind. That's okay. So, Chad is pretty sure you're a wizard, Merrick. So, I mean, I like go for a fact here. Sure. Yeah. I got wands right there. Uh, okay. Alex, Hattie, or Roach? Um, I would say uh, probably if nobody has any um, ideas they want to do right away, Roach is standing up and ready to go. Okay. Um... So with my Absorb Kinetic Energy ability, um, it just says once you've absorbed one point of energy, you can continue to negate one point of damage from any incoming blow or impact. So is this sort of like, um, I'm thinking like this golden sort of thing exploded and now I'm kind of like vaguely glowing with the sort of gold energy kind of thing. Sweet, so like you pull some of that energy and it's sort of wrapped around you. Cool. Yes. I'm also gonna ask you if um, I can then, because I have the action release energy, which is you release one point of energy that I've absorbed, um, magnifying it and focusing it into a blast of energy that strikes a single foe within a long range. So how far away are the people behind me and are they within range? Oh yeah, they're easily within range. So a long range is like up to a hundred feet. These people are okay, like awesome. you can take a quick, a couple quick steps over the prone uh, mall goer bodies and be right up in their face. So long range, easy. Okay, perfect. I think I'm gonna turn around and uh, try to attack uh, one of the standing figures. Okay. Um, this energy, I'm just gonna kind of channel it and be like, Ooh, wham, and just like shoot it back at them. Yeah, go roach. All right, so there is a um, rough-looking Sarah Connor type, <laughs> and 
and then there's a uh, <laughs> looks like a Asian guy with uh, dreadlocks. Ignore the gun right there. I didn't see that when I was placing his token. He doesn't have a gun, but he's got a pirate shirt. He's got a gun. <laughs> no, I'm just he's got uh, two guns. Everybody run! Uh, because pirates are in right now, so he's definitely pirates got a pirate got shirt. A gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna shoot Sarah, and All right. uh, yeah. So I need to use one point of might. Um, okay. What's so. the name of this power again? This power is called Release Energy. Nice. Awesome. That sounds extremely okay. <laughs> I thought it too. We're teenagers. It's true. Okay, so yeah, you. Um, okay. Uh, if you don't have any kinetic energy absorbed, you can still use this ability, but it requires that you transform a fraction of yourself into the blast, which costs one point of might. So this doesn't actually cost you any points because you have absorbed right. one. Yeah. So you're just going to go ahead cool. and make an attack with it which I would assume is intellect based because it's not a weapon so you make an intellect right. roll if you want to spend effort it will come out of your intellect pool um, and they're level 3 so you need a 9 or higher okay got you so if I were to use intellect and I have an in I have an intellect edge of one does that make the difficulty uh, lower or not quite? Oh no, wait, so you, that's for you can effort, sorry about that. Yeah, exactly. But you can spend effort. So you could spend three points, which would be discounted to two, so that you would um, either make it uh, a difficulty two, or you could apply it to damage. So instead of doing your four damage, you could do seven damage, if you hit. Ooh, okay. And otherwise it's a difficulty three, which means I need a nine. Yep. Hmm. I really want to hit this person. So I think I am going to use my effort to lower the difficulty. Okay. And you've got two levels of effort though, right? I do. And I just rolled a nat 20. Nice. Nat 20. That's fantastic. Woo! Okay. Woo. First one. Your son will not Woo! save the world, Sarah Connor, <laughs> as you are annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it does four points of damage, and you could spend two more points of effort to make that seven damage, and then you got the crit, which, um, what's that, that's plus three? Yeah, so you could make that ten damage and one-shot them by spending the, uh, what's the total? Five, five intellect, so discounted, you spend four intellect out of your pool. I I will do that. Too. The major effect we would use in this case is damage, which would be three. Oh. It's it's three damage or a major effect. Yeah, I I'm I'm gonna do that. Do it. All right. So you gather this sort of golden energy around you and throw it towards her. What's that look like? Um. So I'm thinking. Uh. Part of. Roach's powers, which he doesn't fully understand yet, is like it's kind of like he can't necessarily control it. So the, this golden sort of thing explodes out, and his body just kind of like convulses and like absorbs the energy. And then his arms are kind of like confused and wigging. He he sees a person standing up. He's thinking they're going to attack, and he just kind of throws his arms out like as a panic, and it just kind of shoots out. He's a wacky, nice. waving, inflatable arm flailing tube man. Yeah, he is. Yes. He's like, wah! And then just like goes what? for it. And it hits her. And we're in a superhero game. So it hits her and she just like that that um, movie ripcord thing where she just flies away. <laughs> and like, boom, hits the ground and does not move. Is there a weird amount of dust when she lands for no reason? No, she lands on people. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. She takes out the She's lemonade stand. She's very dusty when it hits her. 
it's very dusty when it hits her. Yeah, no, it hits her. not the she lemonade flies, root beer stand. Hits the lemonade root beer stand, and there's drinks all over the floor. Oh, oh no! Roach no. pie. Also, you I do want to point out. I didn't out, mean they're... to do it, man. I didn't mean it. Their most aggressive stance thus far has been not getting knocked down. <laughs> and you were like, ah, explode. The uh, so have shut down the lemonade stand. <laughs> so, so, we've, so we've got Alex and Hattie still to go. Can Hattie go? Hattie should go. Hattie's going to go. So I'm within the bubble, is that correct? You're underneath it. But could I, like, get out from underneath and be still in it? No. So um, it comes from the sides of the stage. Got it. So I got to oh, punch through yeah. the stage. You got it. Got it. All right. Let's do a one-inch punch, baby. So you stand up and you go to punch the stage. Can I stand up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As part of moving in an immediate distance. I just Is there enough space under the stage to stand up? Oh, okay, so you want to punch from below. I thought you, you were coming out from under the curtain and punching into the dome. No, no, I'm going to try to punch up through the wood of the stage. Okay. Um, so as you're sort of gathering your energy and looking at it, difficulty is at 10. Ah, uh, what? This was built to hold six supers. So does that mean the difficulty is 30? Yeah. You need to roll a 30 on a d20. <laughs> uh-huh. Jen, you only roll natural 30s, right? That's your thing. <laughs> so, so is the stage is that... a 30 or the dome? The stage. The energy around it. Oh. Just like and it is coming the off of the yeah it's 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 coming from the top and it's coming off of the um uh the sort of sigils that have been painted on the bottom reasonable so the sigils are glowing they are then i punch a sigil to try to get through well sorry no the energy is coming off of the sigils like you can't get to them it's kind of like a bubble on the bottom and then a dome on top Roll 30, Jen. <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on that. Uh, so how do I lower this? What do I do? Uh, effort, assets, um, training, So if and power shifts. So if you had two power shifts in attacking, you spent a level of effort, and then you had, uh, I don't know, a magical item. That would be four steps going down. It would go from a 10 to a 6. Then you need an 18. So I have an edge 2 in my might. So an edge discounts you spending points out of your pool. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't actually reduce the difficulty. That's what effort does. So you could use your might effort for that. Is your effort 1 or 2? Uh, looking at your character sheet, your effort is one. So you can spend three might, which brings it down to a nine. Got it. And I have to do it with might, I can't do it with dex? No, you could do it with speed as well. Okay, cool. Because I was thinking I was going to use like my phasing stuff. So like, and I have two yeah. power shifts in my dexterity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, because your fist is a light weapon, you can use might or speed. Oh, oh, and actually, my fist is what? a medium weapon. Oh, then it can only use might. <laughs> Poop face. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't understand. I don't well, think punching through the stage is the answer. Yeah, it seems like any direct application of force against this force field is outside of your power level. Yeah, but Ruby wouldn't know that, or Hattie wouldn't know that, so... I mean, I punch it anyways, I guess. And I just right. spend anything on it. So you slam your fist into it, and it's immediately apparent to Hattie that, like, it's just so hard. Like, it's the punch... Ow! moment. I don't feel very super right now. <laughs> 
That's my we're like 16. Okay. Alex's turn. Uh, okay. So, I just want to clarify for my own mental well-being. Everything is still going to progress as planned. Uh, these folk who didn't get knocked down look aggressive. Mm -hmm. They're not just like, people who were like strong enough to resist. No, they look organized. They look like they're not surprised by this. Um, they seem to be setting themselves to move forward. Cool. I would like to stand up. Mm -hmm. And I would like to make my fists made of lightning. Nice. And unfortunately, because my computer is a pile of trash. <laughs> uh, Corey's frozen. Not frozen for me? No, he's not, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I will punch the lady next to me. Okay. <laughs> so you stand up, and uh, lightning gathers around your fists. Uh, she is a level three. What's she look like? She looks, um, you know, like she's having a bad day. Looks like she's, uh, I don't know, I picture she has a smoker's cough. Oh. I don't know why. Weird choice of character definition there, but, I don't know, you know it just seems like it. Punch her in the neck anyway. She's got a very hoarse voice. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she's some sort of shapeshifter, I see. That makes it easier mm -hmm. to punch her. Okay. I'll punch her in the face. Okay. Uh, a th 13? Uh, yeah, that'll hit. You needed a 9 or higher. They're level 3. Beautiful, beautiful news. Now, where did my character sheet go? There it is. So, base level, shock. Adds three damage to, uh, or no, sorry, it adds. What does it add? Some kind of damage or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, it inflicts one additional damage per attack if you wield a weapon for ten minutes. Uh, so as a uh, medium weapon, which my fists are, I believe it's four damage. Or is it three? Uh, light weapon does two. And then four. And then six. And then six. So my yeah. fists do four, plus lightning is five. Okay. Plus, I'm a superman, a super punchy guy, mm -hmm. who took power shifts in shock. Hmm. In, uh, in your special attack? Correct. And I uh, just, my, everything is moving at incredibly slow speeds. Uh, and so my damage is increased by three. Oh dear. So that's eight points of damage to her face. Okay. So, um. Yikes. You slam your fist, like, right under her jaw, and she snaps back a little bit. And, like, <clears throat> uh, you can see, like, a little bla uh, blackened area where uh, your lightning charred her, but she's not down. And I'm just crackling fists, and there's a little bit of a flicker from each eye. Oh, she's a toughie. She's pretty okay. close. Whoa. Um, so that is those who succeeded at initiative, which means now the NPCs go. And um, so this lady in front of you, she sort of puts her hands out, and then she throws one hand uh, right at Alex's chest. And there's a, a burst of silver energy as she attacks you. Uh, make a speed defense to try and dodge. I forgot that, like, just because we have powers uh, doesn't mean that no one else has powers. And I was like, she's going to punch me. <laughs> Why would that be? Nope. These she makes arcane gestures. Speed defense, you said? Yep. Uh, 17? Oh yeah, more than enough. Um, and so you dodge to the side and there's sort of like an expulsion of silvery energy uh, that goes over. 
Um, and then these other ones move up. Uh, die. Moving up to the stage. And um, they begin to sort of like, they, they put their arms underneath it and then start to uh, make these uh, movement gestures, very Doctor Strange, uh, with their hands. And then the bottom of the stage, which is lit up and uh, goldish glow, begins to have sort of a silvery glow and starts to rise. Oh shit! Whoa! Whoa! Okay, uh, Zach or Ruby, you are underneath, and the stage, uh, the golden light, uh, shifts a little bit to a silver. Um, and Ruby, who is still seeing the sort of flows of energy, uh, sees this kind of like filling in underneath, like. Uh, Something, uh, I don't know, filling up a mold almost, like underneath the bottom. I'm making dice. It's all in my head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it starts to rise up. Does it's like, it seem it's like, resin. like, yeah. like <laughs> could I tell if it's, now that people are using their powers more, it's like they're, it's soaking up more energy? Like, is that what it seems like to me? It doesn't look like it's soaking up any more energy. It looks like they're working together to create an effect. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so I think what's going to happen, in all honesty, is so like Ruby is under the stage. The stage starts moving. She's seeing all these colors. Like everything is, a, it's a lot right now. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I start turning into fire because I'm just, I there's just too much going on and I can't control stopping it anymore. Okay. And so, are you using a specific power as you flame on? Yes. So I'm going to use um, Shroud of Flame. And at first, I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, I need to stop it. And then I'm like, well, maybe this is, maybe I'm just going to go with this. Maybe this is more helpful than not doing it. But at first, like, Ruby just like starts yelling random things. Like she's like, rainbows, birthday parties, cupcakes. Like just random stuff that's like normally I try to get my mind off of it. Oh, you know, fire. like not thinking about it. Got it, got it. Yeah. I know like, that tactic. You know, <laughs> baseball stats, apparently, I hear yeah, something. I got a pocket full of sunshine. Start thinking so, about yeah. the uh, eco ecology of turtles. Oh, interesting. Um,. Yeah, so I just start yelling random things, and then I'm like, all right. Huh? I was just like, let's go with it. Okay. And so that is your action. You're covered in fire. Uh, it costs you one intellect point. Um, anyone who touches you takes two damage. If you strike someone with a melee attack, they you do an extra two damage. And you have plus two armor uh, against damage from fire. I hope nobody hits you with a flamethrower. So <laughs> I I want to keep walking towards the symbols, though. Like, that's what Ruby's okay. stuck on, is if I can destroy them, I think I All can right. help. So yeah, you, you begin to sort of move towards them, um, wreathed in flame underneath. You're actually, like, inside the fountain point, I guess. Like, climbed over the, over the lip as it's starting to rise. Okay, uh, what is Zach doing? Um, so let me just recap the scene again. Um, so the stage is starting to float away above us, basically like something is pulling it up. Yep. Um, and I know there's a hero on top of it, so I am going to do my dang darn damnedest to get up there and try and protect them. Okay. And I'm going to shout out to him. Hey, Sentry! We're here to help! Sentinel. Yeah, that's the word I meant. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very no, simple. he weirdly yells, Sentry. <laughs> okay, so um, from where you are, you could... 
uh, move sort of like an immediate distance out and uh, be pretty close to this uh, uh, short-haired, scar-faced-looking woman. Okay, and then would so would that be a double move or something? Nope. Um, you're close enough with like within a medium or within an uh, immediate Meteor distance yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's not going to count as your action to move. No, yeah, then I totally um, bash, yeah, exactly, bash that person in the face with the um, uh, my force with shield. With the shield? Shield, yeah, exactly. Love it. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, but first, no. Hmm. First, I kill her with a gun. Okay, so for a cypher, if I was to use one, does that mm-hmm. take a whole turn? Yes, it takes your action. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to bash in the face and try and get up onto the thing to help the uh, super up there. Okay, so uh, the uh, enemy is a level 3. Cool, cool, cool. Um, So that means I need a 9 or higher, right? That's correct. Okay, I would like to put some effort into this. Just one, though. Just one effort. Maximum effort. Not maximum. Oh, not no, maximum no, effort. No, no, no. no. This Never isn't, Halfway. 50%. It, 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 not even, you know? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Which effort do you have? You can only have two. I have two. So 50% uh, effort. Uh, okay, yeah. So then it'll just be a might roll, right? Or I could be a speed. I'd use might. Definitely might. Uh, yeah, I think we might. Is your fist a light weapon? Uh, no, it's my force field shield, which is a light weapon. Oh, okay. That also eases the difficulty by one step, so you actually right. only need a six or higher. Right, but I also am using effort still. I don't care. Oh, right. So then it's a three or higher. Exactly. We're going to make sure we hit on this, okay, guys? And that costs nine, correct? Summit. No. What? Sorry? Why would it cost nine? Sorry. Bash that pro- costs three, right? <laughs> cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Bash it's probably like, costs one, and you probably got one, one Might Edge, might. right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So then it costs you three, yeah. No, I was doing bad math, and it left me with nine, but it should have left me with eight. Mm. Mm. Don't 15. spend nine. Fifteen. That is definitely a hit. Woo-woo-woo. How much damage does your uh, shield bash do? It does two damages. Two damages. All what right. Bash? What does bash? Yeah. Do? What does bash do? Doesn't that give you plus one? Bash? I don't have bash. No, I was. I thought you were using bash. Oh. Oh. Word. oh like... Okay. Bash is a is an attack. In this game. Yeah. Bash is an ability. <laughs> no worries. You're going to bash them with the. I'm but it's not smash cool. Smash them in the face with it. In which we're case, it only up. cost you two might. What? No, it should still cost me three to do one effort. No, right. If you have a might edge, it but, takes but it, it down still cost me one to do the action itself. No, only if it was an action called bash, which oh. costs one. If you're just punching somebody, it doesn't have an initial cost. Yeah, bash is a thing that stuns people. My bad. So I do have nine. I knew yeah. my math was right. I'm so. Stupid. Hey, we circled back around. <laughs> okay, so that's my turn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you move out. And you punch this lady in the face with your uh, with your uh, fist shield, shield fist. Krang, Krang, um, cool, 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 cool. Then that is uh, bottom of the initiative order, and so everybody out there can see backlash, uh, sort of like starting to get a little bit nervous, and then he like throws the um, uh, the bow staff down at the ground and pushes himself up for like a leaping high kick and he kicks right into the dome and then falls back down. Kind of looks at it more. Oh. Um, Alex, Hattier, Roach, who wants to go? Mine's a pretty simple one. You gonna punch a five? I'm gonna punch a size her face. Do it. All right, she's, she's squared off and she's doing the like arcane hand gestures. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Um, she does the thing like on uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Constantine, Constantine. Whenever he uh, gets into a fight, 
he like throws his hands out Loki style, except then it's full of fire. Except for her, it's full of silver fire. Is it still a level three? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I rolled a 14. That'll hit. So I... She, like, is holding her hands out really, like, fancy, and I just go... <laughs> and she goes to stop, and you're just a little bit too fast, and she's out. Uh, that was... She had one hit point left. Yeah, I dealt eight damage to her. Yep. <laughs> Overkill. I go, no thank you. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna... As a move movemento... Uh, move over to El Blonde Chica do Supremo. Yeah, you can head over there this turn for sure. Well, I can't that touch one his eyes is... there, but... She looks like soccer mom-ish. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, she's got like um, like a zip-up hoodie. Uh, that looks like she could go for like a jog in or maybe just like a, a power walk. There's keys sticking out with like a key fob. And like yeah. a my kid is a student at whatever. Like wears yoga clothes, but not sure if we actually, if she actually does yoga. Mm -hmm. Has never yep. done yoga. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I think maybe we should like not be judging. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. so sorry. Some mom's here. <laughs> <laughs> Some mothers in this call named Jennifer might be offended by all the words that everyone's throwing out. <laughs> oh, really I... specifically. She has she has dark hair that sort of fades to purple. I understand. Wears nothing but yoga pants. Yeah. Also, I'm not judging. I wear athletic clothes way more than I actually do any type of athletic activity. <laughs> oh. Have you noticed there's a dog on you? Okay, uh yeah. She doesn't seem to care. You move up to Soccer Mom, who is um I don't distracted. want to touch a woman named Soccer Mom. <laughs> Can she be like... You didn't ask her name. Destructo or something? <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. That was Alex's turn. Um, so Hattie or Roach? Go ahead, Roach. What to do, what to do. You've um, expended your energy. You might be a little bit low. You might yeah. need to pop a mini donut or something. I, I probably, man. I'm probably just like shoving. Like it's not even just mini donuts at this point. It's like just a bunch of like random garbage and, and like candy wrappers and like loose things and pocket lint. You need just, food. Just like random miscellaneous French fries. You know everything. Pocket um, bacon. Yeah, pocket bacon. Everybody, <laughs> I love. Um, I have a question about. So there's. Uh, obviously, there's like the the golden sort of magical dome thing, but mm -hmm. somebody is casting magic to make it rise. We think, or those yeah. two things are connected. So there's the magical dome, which has created a hard shell that backlash cannot appear to pierce, um, and then the people sort of around. So we've got. Uh, uh, we've got full beard dude with an earpiece. We've got uh, red hair tattoos. We've got Ginger Avenger. <laughs> Ginger Avenger. Uh, pirate without a gun. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Scarface Lady, and we've got Soccer Mom, and they are lifting this like there's they they've done some sort of magical superpowered connected ritual and they are lifting this up and they are starting to lift up with it Nikes. got you so when they're lifting this thing up is there like a beam of energy like coming out of them to do that or what does it look like they're holding it and then there's sort of like a silver energy sort of like glowing around them like or uh, Aurora style. Nimbus. Got you. Nimbus. Okay. That's a good word for it. Yeah. I feel ooh, fancy. Um, I, I feel like Roach is just probably gonna run up behind one of them and tackle them. Um, okay. Be like, okay. stop it. <laughs> um, stop it. Stop it. So yeah, uh, if you want to just. 
if you want to just tackle somebody, then that's going to be trying to get the major effect the same way that Jen or that Patrick was, except you're doing it against a level three instead of a level seven. <laughs> so right. um, you do eight less damage. So you basically do no damage and the difficulty becomes a five instead of a three. Got you. Okay. Um, otherwise, I can just do one of my other ability, like special ability attacks. And I'm thinking about Onslaught. Um, yeah. So onslaught is you attack a foe um, with energies that assail either their physical form or their mind. In either case, you must be able to see the target. Um, if it's physical, you emit a short range ray. If it's mental, you focus your mental energy to blast the thought process. So I would like to try to use the, the the mental energy to sort of try to disrupt one of them from, like to lose them concentrating on this spell type of idea. Okay, so how does Roach have mental attack powers? What are, what are, what are Roach's mental, mental attack powers? We're well, all very curious. You gotta know that, you know, we, we, I, well, we've all, we love, we all love Star Wars, right? And I just really feel like if you really want it and you really believe it and you just take that minute and you, you kind of focus in and you stare down, you know, you can make your goals, you can make your dreams come true, you can materialize and you can use the force, man. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm just gonna like uh, look at Soccer Mom and be like, Jedi mind trick. Stop doing what you're doing, ma'am. This is out of control. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the distance on Onslaught? So the it range? says short range. Short range. So yeah, yeah, yeah you can you can hit anybody. So you can go for Soccer Mom. I, I go for Soccer Mom. Go for Soccer Mom. Um, so it's going to be uh, an intellect cost of one, but because I have an edge of one, it doesn't cost me anything. Yep. And, and you... I need to roll, right? And you said it was a difficulty three? That's correct. Nine or higher. Oh. And I got a six. Low. Unfortunate. You could spend an XP to re-roll that if you like. I don't know that I have any XP left because I think I used them, right? Um, I intruded. I gave you the GM intrusion at the beginning, right? For two, so I only used yeah. one. And so okay, one so was given to Jen, and then you have one because you didn't, you didn't use, use one. it yet. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I can. So then I will use it then. Okay. Sorry. I thought I had given both to Jen, but I think I only gave her one. So excellent. Yeah. So I do that. So does that mean I re-roll or how does that work? Yeah, just roll another d20, exact same um, things and everything. That looked delicious, Amanda. Oof. That was worse. I got a three. It went down to a three. Okay. And so you're focusing and this time the force does not flow. Also, I just think it's perfect that like everybody's like, let's see how Roach is going to like use mental energy. But all you see is just Roach really concentrating really hard and, and nothing's happening. No, nothing's Your happening. Your midichlorians are low. It is awesome. <laughs> oh, I should, my midichlorians are low. You're right. I need, I need to eat more. Please? Yeah, I, I mean. Alex peeks around <laughs> soccer mom and goes, that's not how midichlorians work. <laughs> you don't just no. get more by eating. That's hey, not important right now. This is, this is the thing though. Um, in a galaxy far, far away, as far as we know, they don't have mini donuts. Maybe mini donuts are a source of midichlorians. First of all, I don't care what galaxy you're in. I don't care how long ago it was. There were mini donuts covered in sprinkles. I don't care. I refuse also, to listen to your world. You know, all these ingredients that they put into all these like candies and stuff, you can't even read the ingredients. And midichlorians are probably in there. Yeah. You don't know. I've read all of them and none of them say They're sweetener. Um, okay, so... Hattie! Yeah, Hattie. Hattie is gonna run over to... No... No Guns Pirate. <laughs> Captain 
no guns. And I am going to bash the actual bash. Ooh. Bash him. Bash him. So... Do I do that after if I hit? Is that like a... If you hit, then bash? No. You, you spend uh, and then bash. bash. Yeah, bash is the action that you're taking. Yeah. So you... Yeah. So you spend so, immediately. Which costs one, but I'll have an edge of two. So no big deal. Mm-hmm. And then if you wanted, you could also spend... Um, effort to increase the damage. So you've still got one edge left over. So you could spend yeah. two might and then you're going to do an extra three damage if you hit. Yeah, let's do it. Forgot about that you can spend to increase damage. I forgot about that. Alright, yeah. so what do I gotta get? Uh, they're level three, so you gotta get a nine or higher. Alright. That should be impossible. <laughs> it is! <laughs> <laughs> I got a five. But you do have an XP that you got from Katie. Ooh, I spend it. All right, so that five turns into... What did I need, a nine? A nine. I got a nine! Yay, okay. Yay! Get bashed, pirate. So how much damage does Bash do? So Bash does one less damage. Okay, so... Right, Two. so your punch would do four damage four. because it's a medium weapon. And then, and then I added because three, I so it's a seven. Seven, but then minus one, so a six. So six. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right. And then pirate stunned. Pirate is stunned. Okay. Fingers. And I say, let down the hottie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And it's and... definitely like a like a throat like out. Hit out. And we're gonna put a little stun token on him. He loses his next turn. Love it. That's right. And so he sort of like falls back, and you can see that um with this sort of uh situation going on, the stage rocks just a little bit, but then they begin to rise super high up and they go about 15 feet in the air, pulling away from you. They're pushing up and up and up towards the glass ceiling of the mall. It's reverse of what I thought. <laughs> Where's the rest of the team? Um, at Back. which point, uh, <laughs> Mr. Fairbanks runs forward. <laughs> And he's staring up at this. And he's like, he's run forward with his cart and he's just staring up. Um, uh, Zachary Ruby. <laughs> Zachary Ruby. <laughs> Ruby, what do you want to do here? Um, well, Ruby is fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is fire. Straight fire. And she is now revealed to uh, the people as the stage is now about 15, 20 feet up in the air. But I'm like fire, right? Like you can't, they can't tell it's me, right? That is up to you, um, yeah. how much so, your fire looks like. So the way that I picture it is like, you can't really tell it's fire, but it just like, I just look like this like red orange energy force around me that you can't make out like what the person is like what it is mm -hmm. at all sweet cool um so i'm gonna continue to try to get closer to the symbols i really feel like that's what this is all about they're at the bottom of the stage 15 feet of am i but i'm in the fountain right so like i'm on the bottom right or am i is that it's right up it's lifted away from you Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was under it. Um, okay. So... It's above you. It's got that moment where, like, the camera pans around you. Hmm. So the symbols, can I see them from underneath or no? Yes, you can. There is a large geometric symbol underneath that's glowing with gold and sort of outlined with silver as, um... Mustache, tattoos, soccer mom, 
uh, face scars are pushing up. Even if they're knocked out? Uh, they're not knocked out. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two are knocked out, and uh, Pirate is uh, shaking the stun off. I feel like um, Zach would like to find the flaw in what's going on here. Um, would this, you know, dome and floating thing be considered an opponent? I would consider it a an obstacle. Um, it's not it's not a a, a creature that's acting. As, so okay, then I find the flaw in all the other opponents, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Do you point them out? Are you just super catty? Oh yeah. So oh my god. Has a straightforward weakness takes extra damage from fire. Can't see out of their left eye, and so on. The GM will tell you what it is. Mustaches were so last year. Okay. Um. What is the? What is the level of the find the flaw ability? I'm I'm assuming that you're gonna have to make an intellect roll against their level. It's a enabler. It's just like mm -hmm. a straightforward obvious weakness. Like I can see the red spots in a video game. Okay. <laughs> Their hearts are glowing in their heads. Should sure. There. Um, you can see that every time they've used magic, they've always used their hands. <gasps> Chop their hands off. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Dude! That they need their hands! As I, we all point, I like, also need our hands. Gesture <laughs> 15 feet above us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all up there. <laughs> uh, uh, I have no ranged weapons. I don't know what want me to do, bro. Um, okay, so... I guess... So, like, are the stairs real far away? Um, it'd be like moving a long distance. So, you would make a speed roll. Yeah. And, uh... Let's see. Because you can move a short distance as an action. But to move a long distance, you've got to make a roll because you might just run into obstacles or need to take a longer route. And it might take you longer than you'd hope. Right. So make a speed roll. I'd say people on the ground, mm, it's not going to be that hard mm -hmm. to get it. You just need to get a six or higher. So to it's a level two. Upstairs? Yeah, to say use your long speed or... um. To move a long distance, which will get you to uh, a set of like mall escalators and gotcha. get you running up to the uh, to the second level. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Sorry, what was the difficulty? Uh, level two. Two. Okay. You just need a six or higher. So there's a small chance that you run into like, you know, a bunch of carts table. or strollers or people who are lying on the ground. Yeah, you trip over somebody and like put an elbow into We're someone gonna else. Spend an XP and reroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's I... two men with a pane of glass. Can I put some effort into it this time? <laughs> uh, no, when you spend a um, an XP, it is the same roll. Yeah. yeah. I wanted better chances. Mm -hmm. No, I still failed. <laughs> What? Oh no! You dodge, you dodge under the one pane of glass, and then there's a fruit stand <laughs> on the other side. You go piling. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd oh no, my from? cabbages! Um, Why are those here? I, but I use my shield so I don't get messy. <laughs> it All right. flies over. You're so basically, you're able to run to the base of the escalators, and um, the. Escalators are like crowded with people who are watching this happening, and you're just like, C -c I need to come on, I need to get. Come on. Okay, uh, Ruby. Yeah. So I think my only kind of thing I can really do is use on what. Mm-hmm. Um. So I just. I don't know if I want to use it mental or physical, though. It's uh, it whatever you like. Yeah. It doesn't have much of a difference right now. Like, it, if you were going against somebody who 
had armor, you'd want to use mental. If it was going against um, a monster construct that doesn't have a brain, you'd use physical. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to use mental then. That's kind of more Ruby's thing. Okay. Can I use the force too? Well, yeah, my, my force is very different, though. You're really taking uh, Roach's words to heart. You're like, maybe I'm the Jedi here. Oh, no. Ro <laughs> Ruby is just, like, in her own world, all well, she still can, fire. Well, she can hear his fire. Um, but, yeah, I see, obviously, it going on. Um, and I'm like, well, I don't know how to destroy the, like, symbols anymore. They're too far away. I guess I'm going to try to help with the, like, the people people okay so i'm gonna attack the pirate looking one i guess that's probably the closest one to me yep um and yeah so i'm still all fire um and i see that one i see it right next to hattie and i just like um yeah, I like start singing again, like hum humming to myself. Like, Don't okay. touch me with your fire, no. No, I, I like far enough away from you. It's fine. Um, and what song am I gonna sing? Um, the Beatles, I think. Um, Let It Be. Oh mm. God damn it, Amanda! <laughs> Fuck off. Um, yeah, so just I'm just humming and singing along to myself, so it just looks like this like ball of red orange fiery heat energy is just like making noises and um and yeah, and then I'm just gonna give this like mental attack to this guy and uh hopefully I can get through. I hope you okay. get a demon voice and it's like let it be it's like a really nice voice. Stop. It's like this, like <laughs> really nice voice coming from this, like. <laughs> it's the Mr. Burns wow. walking through the forest. <laughs> I bring Bringing us wolves. <laughs> Kill him. Uh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll your intellect attack. You need a nine or higher to affect a pirate. Okay, and just to confirm, it has a cost of one, but I have an edge, so it doesn't actually cost anything. That is okay. correct. Blast Captain No Guns. Sorry, what did I need? Nine. Nine. Oh, okay, I got 11. Woo! All right. And so Onslaught does four damage, I believe, right? Cool. And so <laughs> you're singing, and he's, like, just shaking off this stun from the hit. And then suddenly his ears, and he's putting his hands over his head. What is that happening? Oh, my God. Okay, I have an idea. Can when, okay. they, when I do this, can the song that I'm singing just, like, be blaring in their head? Like, like <laughs> can that be, like, how the attack is for them? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> he's like, no! I hate the Beatles! <laughs> yes. This was their worst album! Ah, it's so overplayed! <laughs> I heard this at a grad once. <laughs> I heard it at every grad once. <laughs> Leave her crowd out of this. <laughs> I didn't say anything, Jen. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, okay. Sounds good. That is end of the initiative order, which means group intrusion. Oh, no. Everybody gets one XP. Woo. That's terrible news. There's, and uh, everybody looking up as this is levitating to the second floor, sees a uh, shrouded, a hooded, gray cloaked figure holding a large staff made out of silvery metal. And they reach out the staff and draw everything upwards faster. The, uh, the stage begins to rise more quickly, gathering speed as it heads towards the glass ceiling. And then the um, unconscious bodies of the uh, two folk begin to rise as well. 
and the pirate guy too. We have revealed a new NPC. Captain Dickweed. And uh, it is uh, Alex, Hattie, and Roach. Any actions you want to take? Uh, you Hattie do? wants to go. Can Hattie go? Go for Hattie. Go, Hattie. go, go, go. I am going to face Brent. Okay. Uh, I can run up to a long distance as long as I take no other actions until the beginning of your next turn. All right. What so does it look I. like and where are you going? Yeah. So Hattie is a phaser. So when she moves really fast, just don't picture the flash. It's not like a streak. She um, glitches in and out of existence. So she'll just be here and then she'll kind of glitch and pixel and be here. And then glitch and pixel and be here. So um, yeah, she's just kind of glitching along. Uh, and she would like to get up to the cloaked man if possible. Okay. Uh, yes. For a long distance, she's able to go through the uh, the crowd on the uh, escalator and boop, 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 right up yeah. to the person there. I don't have to run around them. I just phase through them. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And then, oh man, I can't take any other actions except I can, when phase sprinting, graze a creature while moving to inflict two points of damage. Okay, uh, make a speed attack roll um, against I'm, a little... Yep. I can also do additional damage per effort spent. Okay. So can I spend an effort? You might want to save the effort for the attack, as this is a level 8. I will save the effort for the attack, as this is a level 8. Alright. So... Uh, I'm not very good at the system. It cost me one speed to do the phase sprint, but I have an edge in that. Okay. It cost me one might to do the disrupting touch, but I have a two edge in that. Okay. We use my effort to drop this, correct, by one. Yeah, which only brings it to a seven, which is still a 21. And then I can spend some might to drop it or something else? No, that is your effort. That's uh, spending your might. So you spend three points out of might. Um, and you've still got one edge left over in might that hasn't been used. So, I so you subtract two. two. Yep. Yeah. And then you've got your power shifts, right? What are those two in? They're both in dex. I really should have moved those to might. I didn't realize my attacks were might. I thought my attacks were dex. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, we can just move them right now. This is this is literally our first episode streamed. Let's apply this right now that your... Um, you want both of your power shifts on might attacks? Yeah, because I, I, I didn't think that she hit hard enough last time. Mm -hmm. And because you've got that uh, martial arts thing, your your fists are... My medium weapons. Yeah, they're medium weapons, so they need might not uh, speed anyways. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's why I got them wrong. So spending your effort and your two power shifts, that reduces the difficulty by three, which makes it to a five of 15 or higher for you to hit that's a number that's in theory possible mm -hmm. you got this. that was a d12 so <laughs> <laughs> close no but i can spend an xp yeah you can spend an xp to re-roll that i got a seven the first time my second time no i got an 11 oh so and close. so so you zip in and you're trying to sort of like uh, throw a shoulder or something into this person, um, but you pass right through them. And when you look back, you see that they're actually standing in a separate place and there's sort of like this mirror image effect. How dare they face? That's my thing. You got your baited. <laughs> Jump baited. Uh, okay, so that was Hattie. Alex or Roach? What are you well, going to do? Uh, I'll go. If you're... Yeah, do it. Okay with that. Okay. So, unlike uh, Hattie, I'm not going to glitch through everyone. I'm going to, just using my sweet natural speed, uh, run up and try and run up along the arm of the escalator. Wasn't it canon that you just have a sweet speed walk? 
Uh, no. <laughs> Sweet mall walk? <laughs> nope. Zero percent. I have very long legs. They carry me very fast. I do not speed walk anywhere. All right, um, so you're using your fleet of foot to move a long distance? Correct. Uh, now, I just I don't think I can do anything to possibly hit him this turn. Because if I, if I move my long distance and apply a level of effort, I can move a long distance and take an action. But that attack is hindered. Mm. Uh, which would be cancelled by my power shift and accuracy, which eases attack rolls. Mm -hmm. So he's still at a 7, which is still impossible to hit. <laughs> yep. And I don't have any... And I can't apply effort because I have to apply effort to move and then take the action. So right. uh, I will just move the long distance. So like and, uh, going up like the down escalator arm or the up escalator arm? Probably the up, because that would aid me in moving. Right, but going up the down would be cooler. It would be. It would be foolish. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, okay. I'm not the Flash. I, I don't have super speed. I'm just a quick boy. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to get up right in his grill. Alright. And uh, you can see I, I've sort of added one. this little area on the map which uh, is actually up a level. I'm okay. glad we're fighting the Grim Reaper. That's cool. <laughs> and uh, that was Alex. So Roach. Roach. Okay. Um, I have a dumb idea, but Roach always does. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what I'm thinking about is using far step to jump up which is as long as it's like a long range as long as i have a clear and unobstructed path to the location i'd like to just sort of jump straight up and try to grab whatever scaffolding and and like poles and stuff are under the stage because i'm assuming the dome is just kind of like on the top and the undercarriage of it is like a bunch of like metal beams and stuff unfortunately not because we've had the punch there and uh, the attempt to uh, do the thing, the energy has sort of like a, a bubble underneath and then the dome on top. It is pretty clear from below. Okay. Did, did it rise off of the metal framework? Nope, it is pulling the entire metal framework up. Because they were in and amongst the metal framework when the dome was erected. Yeah, but the energy comes, like it's coming from the, uh, um, the design. So it comes out and then shoots up. What I'm saying is it's a bubble. Yeah. Okay, so it is a bubble. <laughs> and there's nothing to, like, latch on to, really. No. If I were to... Jump... I mean, there's people to latch on to. <laughs> Just around you. <laughs> um, and there, those people are also floating, right? Yeah, like, you could grab on to <laughs> one of the... Like, you could grab on to a pirate who is being floated up by this other robed figure. Uh, we, never, we never liked this pirate. Maybe I'm going to jump, I'm going to far step up and just like pig, piggyback onto this guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. On his like, unconscious <laughs> so, form. Um, yeah, I think I. this is what I think I want to do. Um, so I want to just far step jump on to this guy and i what i'm also hoping is because zach was like guys they need their hands i want to like maybe try to grab his hands and stop him from <laughs> like yeah using them okay so it's too intellect to do that you reduce it by your intellect edge but you're still going to need to make a grab type roll so that can be might or speed your choice and i would say that it's level four his level plus a little bit extra okay and can i use my xp to um l either lower the difficulty or re-roll if i fail i guess uh your which your speed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can spend yeah. effort to do so your your xp would be to re-roll yeah the you would spend fees to re-roll speed right. points to uh, apply a level of effort which would be reduced by your edge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was three. And I think then... I and and you said yeah, and you said I could potentially use might instead of speed because I have an edge for might. So if I could, I'd rather use that than speed. 
Uh, yeah, you can use or might or speed. Or do I have to use speed? It's okay. Perfect. It's just the difference between um, whether you are like nimbly grabbing him or just like slamming into him and bear hugging. The bear hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, like jumping out to be like, stop it, and just like gonna try to tackle him out of midair, basically, um, nice. and like yeah. incapacitate his arms. I love okay. how that um, worded it. Chat said, "Holding hands, but make it aggressive." Yeah. <laughs> I We're love gonna it. be friends yes. forever. <laughs> you don't get a choice. Perfect. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna do that. So, okay, sorry. To recap, I have an edge in might. Um, I'm using an intellect point to cast far step, but then it cancels out because I have a an edge already, so I don't have to spend. Um, I can also add my effort to spend up to five might points in order to bring it down um, to a, a challenge rating three. Yeah, which is just a grab a on. Uh, yeah, okay. it's just a grab on so I, to not fall. Okay, perfect. And then I just need a, not, a nine or higher, basically. Yep. You okay, can do guys. it. Here we go. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's stop the one. fuck off! Come on! Okay, 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 okay. But Merrick, I have to tell you something. I have to tell mm -hmm, you something. Mm -hmm. I have a feature called dumb luck. Okay. When <laughs> I roll a nat one, um, like you just hang did. On, I will read it to you, like I just did. So, the GM can introduce a GM intrusion on you based on your clumsiness um, and without awarding you any XP, as long as you'd rolled a nat one. However, if this happens, 50% of the time, your clumsiness works to your advantage. Rather than hurting you that much, it helps you or hurts your enemies. You slip, but just in time to duck out of an attack, for example. Or you fall down, but you trip your enemies as you crash into their legs. So that's like a few few examples. So okay, interesting. I like it. So Topher. Okay, so <laughs> roll me another d twenty in the chat. If you get eleven or higher, it is the fifty percent of also getting a positive benefit. Alrighty, here we go. Natural twenty. No. Oh, that's an eight. eight. Okay. So um, you leap up and uh, you're going to grab at him right at the exact time that uh, he's sort of like finally shaking out of this and he spins his hands for a spell, boosting himself up towards the rest of the people and you just <laughs> through the area. <laughs> but you still land safely because that's part of far step. You far right. step to nothing. Oh shoot! Oh well, I liked. I love this picture of of Topher just being like, "Okay, here we go." What? What the fuck? And then he's just like <laughs> over there on the other side of the mall. He's like, "Not cool, what's pirate dude." To move, man, yeah, not cool. <laughs> All right, but here's a fun thing that happens. I'm really nervous Mist now. Mr. Fairbanks reaches into his cart and pulls out what looks like a small shotgun. <laughs> um, uh... And aims up, <laughs> we're gonna go with Pirate Man, and fires. There's no Holy shot, shit. no sound. It's just out of nowhere, Pirate Guy stops floating and falls down. Damn, Mr. Fairbanks! Is what everyone says as they turn to him. <laughs> and, uh... There? Yes. There's another couple of things that are happening. Um, so this guy drops down, and Fairbanks is going before these people, and so this guy tries to, like, uh, spark some more magic, and it's not doing anything, he and he just goes... Him eyes wide and sprints off down past the candy shop. Oh, so he wasn't injured from the fall. 
No. Holy shit, balls. Um, and then the other people continue to rise upward um, and they hit the glass ceiling and it shatters. Uh, the glass falls across and starts falling down in a circle uh, on all of these people and I'll have uh, Roach and Zack and Ruby please all make me speed defense rolls to kind of like duh <laughs> um, but bro like, this... I'm wearing like a goalie mask so I have armor when did you put a goalie mask on? So it's a uh, level three. <laughs> it was in my backpack. We know. ask him that all the time. Zach, when did you put that on? <laughs> you, just, you just turn to him, he's wearing a goalie mask, and you're like, How, th what? You didn't move. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Alrighty. Yeah. I got a 12. Okay, um, uh, Topher's fine, and then question? Yep. I have three armor, right? Yeah. Two from being fire and one from ward. You'll take no damage. Is your fire only against fire, though? Oh, yeah, sorry. The fire oh. is only against fire. So I have one armor, then. Yeah. Okay. The glass has ignited. Uh, you are totally fine. 19 is also a minor effect. Yeah, it is. So, um... Do you want to just, like, move quickly, or... Yeah, I want the minor... Take an out-of-turn movement? Could the minor effect be that, like... Um, I'm on the escalator and I was trying to push through everybody and like, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. We didn't move you. You were definitely not underneath the falling glass. <laughs> so uh, you didn't need to roll. So no minor effect. Fuck! <laughs> Boy, the minor effect is that you're actually at the escalator. Is that you're over there and you're safe. How crazy. Uh, Cool. Circling back to Topher, Topher <laughs> actually gets um, your absorb energy because that's kind of like a physical attack against you. Awesome. Uh, so, Amanda. I rolled a 14 and I have the one armor. Oh, then you're fine. Uh, you're able to bat the glass away and so on. It's just that beautiful cinematic falling, uh, shattering glass um, as it rises up into the ceiling. Uh, and then Zach and Ruby have actions. Um, I would like to, s has the Jan has Mr. Fairbanks ran off or is he still there? No, uh, he is still there. I want to scan the, the shotgun he has. Sure. Um, yeah, so you sort of go up and you scan that a little bit and, um, it is made of... Uh, metal and and various pieces and and so on, but uh, it doesn't seem to have any abilities. Do I see like any of the energy or any of the aura? Like, does it have? Does it give off any? Hmm. No. Um. What it seems like was that this was perhaps a single-use object that has been expended. It's a cipher. Like the system. We have In ciphers. <laughs> I don't remember what mine are. Oh man! That's why I yours asked how are long two it takes of these. Them, and then we found out it was a turn, so I didn't use it. These are your ciphers. I have them separate. Okay, so yeah, you scan that, and you can see. Um, he doesn't seem to have any sort of energy around him. That item appears to have been expended. Um, what does Zach do? So Zach is going to attempt to sprint up the rest of the escalator and dive off the second floor and latch onto one of the floating um, bags. Oh no, they've, they've hit the glass ceiling and shattered through it. Like, you'd right. need to get to the roof at this point, and by the time you got to the roof, they'd be floating off into the sky. This isn't working, guys. I yeah, mean, you can both. see the gray-robed wizard with uh, Alex and Hattie right beside them. Okay, we're calling an audible and going back that way. 
All right. Yeah, no problem. You can move. You can use your action to move that far. <clears throat> Leave my sister alone. And the three of you are basically gathered around this robed figure. Um, and they say in a feminine voice, you're meddling in things you don't understand. And then she disappears. Do you of recognize course. the voice? Nope. It is not someone that you have heard before. I thought it was the teacher. Yeah, me too. Mm. Um, she disappears. Okay. Whoa. Where the living uh, hell are the rest of the damn sentinels? Yeah, yeah, right? This was a trap. This was a setup. What is happening? Roach and Ruby see the one remaining member running out of the mall and into the parking lot. Get him! Yeah. Um, I would Which is where we'll pick up next week. Son no! of a dirty yeah! ass! Son of a... No! Oh. Uh, it's only worst. 11, and we all... <laughs> it's only Friday. Good Friday. So. Four more hours is fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everyone eat a big handful of coffee. Let's go. <laughs> just eat it. Just ground. Whatever you need to do. <laughs> this was fantastic, sir. Oh, Very good. Yeah, thank so you. Uh -huh. Awesome. Right, so win things. Yeah, let's do let's the do giveaway. Move I know it sounds selfish, thing. but is it possible for us to win them? No. Uh, Damn it. Uh, I knew that was the <laughs> Watches the watches. Okay, one last time before we end it, I'm just going to do the thing. Drum roll. Oh, that's fine. Hold on. And thank you to everybody who joined us. What yeah. Do you know who's here, but hello. Thank you so much. Welcome to us being nerds on the internet. How many uh, how many viewers do we have going on? Currently 11. We were rated earlier on um, by uh, like with 25 viewers and. Damn. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it was cool. They they were uh, from yeah. a Tolis stream apparently. Oh, awesome! The Tola stream people came over. Yeah, there so are Tola streams. <laughs> you didn't know about that? Okay, so uh, Latia, she's the uh, community engagement for Monty Cook Games. She's oh, the one who's been yeah. helping us out with all of this. And then she was on. Right after yeah. they um, raided us is when Monty Cook Games followed. So that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was uh, playing on that stream, and they were wrapping up their uh, campaign tonight. Dope. Mark Mir was playing in that, I believe. What? Need to, yeah. Need to find this. Well, thank you for <laughs> watching. Yeah. Now. Thank you. How do we make the thing oh, go? Who yeah, thing? you're you're ending the do ending the giveaway now. Yeah. Cool. Three, two. One. Close Action. the giveaway huh? for new entries. The giveaway is closed for new entries. Draw entrant, Miss <gasps> Chrysalin. Miss Chrysalin, hey! yay! Hey! Congratulations. Hey! So, um, yeah. Before we completely end, I mean, thank you again to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Roll20, you've been wonderful to us for so long. Monty Cook Games, you're always wonderful to work with. Thank you for doing the giveaways and so on. Um, and all the help. Uh, I also want to, for our first episode, shout out uh, the writing team that have helped Yay. me put all of this together. That is Grace Struth and Adam e. Stewart. Uh, big thank you to Corey for doing all of our production. Yay. And Amanda Ooh. for drawing. And Amanda yeah. for your drawings. Uh, hey, Kitty Katie Boy for having a head. <laughs> uh, Look at it. Yeah. Uh, Kidney Boy for the maps. Uh, Andrew Katie. Wedman Woo. for our uh, our banners our, and our announcements. And Ali Greenway for our character art. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, um... 
And thank you very much to my players for coming and playing. We got three more sessions to see where it goes. I don't like that. That is too few sessions. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night and a long weekend if you've got a long weekend. <laughs> see you next week. Oh. Um, I, I should actually also say that, of course, um, follow us on Twitter at SkyhammerK and on Instagram at Skyhammer Press uh, for various things. Um, you can get our podcasts, uh, uh, Massive Damage Adventures on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all sorts of things. This will be on VOD on Twitch and we'll put it on YouTube in a couple of days and it'll come out on podcast under the uh, channel Massive Damage Campaigns. Woo -woo -woo. Yeah, that's all the things. You're putting the door in that one. Okay, great. Have a wonderful night. Thank you everybody for coming out. Bye. Bye. This, this, how do you do that? That thing right there. Oh, the little heart. The little, there the you little go. heart. Oh, I'm like the youth.